than anybody else who's fit in the Blackburn Rovers squad. Can he make an impact in the final minutes of this game? Well, there is not long left now. Oh, and Blanky's come to claim an aerial ball there, and it was right on the corner of his penalty area. I thought he was all right there. I thought he was on the line. Home fans didn't think so. But Ipswich have looked shaky in this second half. They lead by a goal to nil. You're listening to the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. We have eight, in fact, fewer, seven and a half minutes of normal time to go at Ewood Park. And, well, they've led since the ninth minute of the game of uh, Ipswich Town, but they have not looked like uh, promotion contenders. Far from it in this second period. They've got to go again in three days' time against Southampton that'll be a sterner test on, on recent showings forward come the orange shirts of Ipswich for a rare foray into the Blackburn half but Twanzebe's pass to Alhamdi was under kit and Dolan can roll away with it up towards halfway he is now and Ipswich are slow to get back Dolan with the crossfield ball looking for Smodix who's gone out wide up against Twanzebe on the edge of the area Sam Smodix down towards the byline tries to cut back inside it's a, it's a good challenge that comes in in the end and uh, diverted out for a corner by Caden Jackson who's helped out with a defensive effort and I think because he's kicked the ball away he's earned himself a yellow card yeah it's silly from Jackson there he's done really well to help out his full back Twan Zabi. Sam Smorix looked like he was getting away from him he's got his body in front of ball and man that's what you have to do as a midfield player it's great in the offensive third but you've got to do your defensive duties also corner to Blackburn who trailed by a goal to nil Sondra Trunster to take it, left footer, out swinger, it arcs towards the back post, Wolfen got ahead on it, 18 yard box it drops, knocked it down and comfortably so Wharton flicking it in towards the back post and there were three blue and white shirts there but Gladke got in ahead of them all and dived low at the feet of Andy Moran and Gladke looked much more confident on the ball this time, it remains Blackburn Ellipse which won. Yeah well I mean that's what we've been waiting for from Gladke, we know he's very good coming off his line, you can see three Blackburn players from that ball into the box from Sans Morix, they're all hunting him down. But he's sharp, he's bright, he gets off his line, takes the pressure off his back line, and just got to compose themselves, Ipswich. See this out, it's always difficult. Look, eight cup finals they've got, this being one of them. Doesn't matter if you win five or six nil, if you can get over the line, win games one nil, you keep racking up those three points, everybody else around you has to do their jobs. Seven games to play for both of these sides after it, and some tough ones for Ipswich too. They've got Southampton at home coming up on uh, Monday and then Norwich away is the next one that's on uh, TalkSport 2 an exclusive uh, at 12.30 on Saturday the 6th some big battles they've got and they finish at uh, home to Huddersfield and that might be a battle for a different kind because uh, and the Terriers are locked in a battle at the bottom three and that's a battle that Blackburn might be lucky to avoid if they can't take anything from this game and that value you would say Mickey Gray for at least something on the second half shot. yeah no absolutely yeah. Um, you know you can criticise them as much as we did in the first half and rightly so because they weren't at the races but you want a reaction from your players and John Eustace whatever he said at half time it's worked these players have actually reacted they've showed great intent showed great energy as well and you really should be back on level terms and I keep going back to it or harping on about it the quality in the final third well they've had big chances Sammy Smorix two or three big chances in his second half on another day puts it in long ball played forward towards Tilalovic the big German knocks it down and Dolan's in the 18 yard box it's back to Tilalovic in the penalty area all orange shirts around him and Wolfen and nicks it off and he was offside anyway and Ipswich did have defensive numbers back to cope with the threat of Talalovic. He's not scored for Blackburn in the 18 games he's played since joining from Munch and Gladbach. But that's what Mickey was talking about earlier. So good at hold-up play. It bounces off his big burly frame, but he's offside this time. And it's a let-off for Ipswich Town. Well, it's exactly what they've missed. In the first 45 minutes, Talalovic, who should have been on the pitch to hold that ball up. And then you've got the lively players of Dolan, Hedges, Smorix around him, you know, with a quick feet. And that just causes any back line a problem. And you can see how much better they've been in the second half. I know Talalovic has just came onto the pitch, but you can see, hold the ball up, bring your livelier players into it. I've got to say, while, while I'm talking here, Tyrese Dolan's been outstanding today, Cameron, hasn't he? His energy's been fantastic. He's been everywhere across that, uh, that attacking third on the left, on the right, through the middle and he's covered a lot of the grass here at Ewood Park but nothing to show for it so far he had a lovely little chip cross that he uh, tried to play into the into the middle for, for Keeper Moore I think it was, wasn't it? Well, not for Keeper Moore, I should say for Sam Smodix uh, at 0-0 after 25 minutes and uh, it was clawed away well by Cladkeep but uh, it's just been that kind of game for the Blackburn Rovers and they've had all the pressure in this second half 
and for all the goodwill in the world there's been no goal coming they thought they had it twice they've had goals disallowed even in this game as well if you look back to the first half and Joe Rankin Costello with his shot deflected into the top corner but Sam Smodix deemed to be in the goalkeeper's island in an offside position some might say it was harsh and then in the second half well uh, a shot lashed in off the bar by Andy Moran but a foul on the goalkeeper in the build-up but it's Blackburn coming again trying to cross towards Tilalovic but the ball wasn't a good enough one and Wolfenden can clear it's up in the air by Luongo when it needed to be away and it's going to come down with interest and Harry Clark sees it bounce off his shin on all those balls that Ipswich are controlling in the first half they're going away from them now Mickey. yeah no they're just panicking aren't they Harry Clark I just wonder why they made that substitution of bringing Harry Clark come for, for Leif Davis who I thought was fantastic in the game because Clark at the moment since he's came on he's really struggled and I think it was Callum Britton actually, not Callum Britton Andrew Moran on the right hand here side here's Jeremy Samiento arcing through the middle though and he's opened up a bit of play here Ipswich down into the penalty area Jackson tried a pop shot across the face of goal and he could see that the defenders were bearing down on him and it was Wharton who came across in the end and both players have hurt themselves there Gaden Jackson and and uh, and Scott Wharton too but he tried the shot across the face of goal couldn't quite get the angle right but it was all from the good play Mickey of Jeremy Sarmiento picked it up on halfway ran past two in blue and white splayed it out wide and it was a move that could have ended this game well it, it's simple football isn't it you get yourself on a half turn you get your head up you look at runners in front of you this time it's Jackson down the right hand side it was his first touch wasn't it it got away from her a little bit too much and then Scott Wharton came across showed great pace great determination just to make contact with it and again, as a centre half, you think he's played against Keeper Moore this afternoon. He's also playing against Jackson and Al Hamadi at the moment. I think again he's had a very good game. Ayari in the centre circle for Blackburn. There's still a goal down. 90 seconds of normal time remaining. He's played an aerial ball forward, looking for Smodix, who was offside. It was the wrong ball to play. And frustration for Blackburn Rovers fans who turn their eye up towards the assistant referee on the far side. And Ipswich Town. And taking all the time in the world to get the ball rolling again into the final minutes of normal time we're about to go and Ipswich are set to go back well to where they'll think their, their performances uh, merit them being they've won seven of the last eight they're winning this one and they're going top of the championship yeah well look we're at that point in the season aren't we Cameron where it's not about performances it's about results and Ipswich have been really poor in this second half not being able to get out of their own half which has been a real struggle for them look nervy and giving the ball away give the impotence certainly back to Blackburn Rovers and look they're probably going to get booed the home side at the end of this game but I, I think on that second half performance they merit something from this something just got thrown onto the pitch there Mickey when you were speaking it was down below us uh, by the two technical areas it was picked up by two Blackburn players and tossed to the side I don't know if it's anything malicious or whether it's just something banal like a spare shin pad or something but it's been uh, it's been thrown from the field of play at a critical moment as well because 20 seconds to go Rovers still trailing at Ewood Park but they've got a throw in far side there right 20 yards from the corner flag and we're about to learn the uh, extent of added time don't go anywhere on Talk Sports 2 Watford versus Leeds in the battle for a supremacy in the championship straight after this at 8 o'clock five minutes though the added time and that has got the home fans going they've been pushing and pushing all of this second half cross coming in from the right hand side deep towards the back post Wharton's gone up but beaten by Wolfenden in the air still heads from both sides trying to claim it out to the area it goes Ayari goes up for it and now Hutchinson can steal it trying to go over halfway for Ipswich he's the furthest orange shirt forward he's going to have to do it all himself can he hold it up maybe trying to hold off the advances of uh, Sam Smodic he's done really well and he's uh, managed to win his side of throwing halfway inside the Blackburn half he was all on his own there Hutchinson and that man well if that's anything to go by he's got some future ahead of him I think <laughs> yeah no absolutely Cameron now I can count two times that Sam Smodix was in a foot race with Hutchinson bearing down on this Blackburn Rovers goal and Smodix has got himself back full credit to him because everybody talks about the goals and, that, and rightly so because it's been a brilliant season from him but that work ethic to help out his teammates to get back and work hard to win the ball back for your team superb here is Ayari for Blackburn halfway inside his own half Ipswich still leading it Ewood Park by a goal to nil and then Harry Clark is just pinched on a loose pass on halfway goes down referee gives the free kick and Ipswich now are taking every opportunity just to stall the play and uh, they are headed for top spot in the championship but well it's not been a, a spellbinding performance from them in this second period if they do get the job done it'll be thanks to Connor Chaplin's goal in the ninth minute Leif Davis setting up with a lovely ground cross since then though or since half time more accurately they've had so little going forward and they've got a chance now 
to eat up some more valuable seconds. Scott Wharton, Mickey, has been given the player of the match by the home sponsor. What do you make of that? Yeah. Well, I just touched on, his, on him before. I think, no, let's not forget he's played against Kiefer Moore. He's, pre he's pretty much marked him out of the game. He's got El Hamadi and he's also got Jackson alongside him now. And I think whenever he's been called upon, he's come up trumps. He's done his job right and he's actually been a threat in the opposition's half as well. He was the one who made the foul on Hladki, wasn't he, before a Blackburn put the ball in the back of the net. But I think it's been a really outstanding performance. Himself and Tyree Stolen certainly been the standout players. And we tick on in added time. Five minutes were, uh, were awarded. We've had two and a half of those. Hip switch up trying to get the ball into an attacking position and get across him but they're going to settle to keep the ball in the corner which they failed to do and it will be a Blackburn throw in adjacent to the corner flag they go across their own goal here's Wharton just inside his own penalty area Hutchinson closing off his angles forward it comes to Pickering but it wasn't a great ball and Caden Jackson wins it back for, uh, for Ipswich then runs 40 yards back towards his own goal goes down in the challenge with Dolan who is incensed that the uh, man in orange has gone down to ground there and the ball is cleared by Václav Hladky upfield again but Blackburn will come back with it Trunster centre circle Rovers half of the field his side trailing by a goal to nil two minutes to go of added time on TalkSport 2 Blackburn down the wrong end of the championship looking to set things right Moran far out to the penalty area crosses in Wolfen then heads it up in the air it drops in the back post fizzed across the face of goal and the deflection takes it behind for a corner Jackson with the intervention it could have gone anywhere and it's another corner to Blackburn Rovers and we've got a man down from each side now Mickey yeah well Hutchinson's down and, and it's also Pickering from this left hand side as that ball comes into the box it's kind of floated because it's a clearance he does very well because his first touch is fantastic Pickering he does get his shots away it looks like it's going wide hoping for a deflection into that Ipswich goal but could he have taken it first time it would have been a worldy don't get me wrong but I think that chance was there just to get your laces through it what a big chance late on in this game Ipswich want to make a train they've got the centre back Cam Burgess ready to come on but their side are defending a corner one minute of added wow. time to go oh and Hutchinson's gone down again in the 18 yard box now and the Blackburn fans are getting really irate here that's not gamesmanship Cameron I could see in the technical area all the coaches and Kieran McKenna were pointing across to Hutchinson to say go down go down to ground because they wanted to make this change and there's going to be a change of peace now as well has he given him a yellow card there? not sure no I think he's got up and he's just going to limp his way off but it's really harsh the booing I think is what we can say because there was a man now from either side and even if he hadn't been down Hutchinson the game wouldn't have been restarting anyway we've got Hayden Carter preps and ready to come on for Blackburn Rovers for the uh, remaining moments of this game and well it's uh, we're on borrowed time now because the 95 minutes are as good as up Hutchinson's making his way to the side of the field so an attacker's coming off and Burgess the defender who's been away on Australia duty is coming on and it's uh, Hayden Clark who makes his way on for, for Harry Pickering three, for Blackburn Pickering Rovers as we pass on into the 96th minute now and still and still we're waiting for this corner to be taken Blackburn maybe with one chance to get something from this game a point that you'd have to say they deserve on the balance of play far side there right here it comes out swing a man goes down in the penalty area the header is flicked on towards the back post picked up by Ayari he'll cross in everybody forward for Blackburn bar the goalkeeper out towards the edge of the penalty area it comes picked up by Britain plenty of men loading the penalty area here comes the cross it's not good enough though it hits Luongo and Ipswich can hack this ball clear and we're at the mercy of the referee now long ball comes forward at least one of those Blackburn players in the mixer was offside back to Britain in the centre circle he's going to go back to his goalkeeper and it all depends on Stuart Atwell now who's not been the best friend of the home fans so far how long Blackburn Rovers have but they're playing it round at the back Andy Moran is exchanging passes with his goalkeeper when the ball needs to be down the other end and forward it does come Water went up for the header but he lost out towards Jackson up towards halfway it goes for Ipswich and now pinched by Alhamidi who's trying to twist clear and the challenge came in in the end from Carter but he can't prevent it ricocheting out for what would be a corner but the final whistle has gone after 51 minutes of an intense second half at Ewood Park it's a result that will have ramifications at both ends of the championship table on TalkSport 2 Ipswich with that ninth minute goal on Connor Chaplin's return will go top of the division two points ahead of Leeds with them yet to play on uh, Good Friday 
They will kick off in around about 34 minutes time on TalkSport 2 away at Watford where they can retake the summit. Ipswich have limped over the line, Mickey Gray, against a spirited Blackburn performance in that second half who are trying to claw themselves away from the mire at the bottom of the table. They will finish this game as they started. Three points clear of the drop zone, three places above it, but it is Ipswich's day. Somehow, they've come away with three points here and it's finished at Edward Park. Blackburn Rovers nil. Ipswich Town 1. Ipswich cling on then. Thank you, Cameron Vogue. What a huge result that is for the Tractor Boys. It takes them top of the championship table for the time being. They've taken advantage of Leicester's loss earlier today, which was live on TalkSport 2, and they put the impetus on Leeds to win. And Mickey Gray, in the end, they will be delighted that they managed to get the job done. Oh, absolutely thrilled to pieces, Ollie, because it was a, a really poor second half showing from Ipswich Town who looks so in control in the first half but this is what happens when you get to those seven or eight games for the remainder of the season you start to panic you start doing things that your body you're looking at yourself and thinking why have I just done that you're making those mistakes they're nervous all they've got to do now is just keep ticking these games off because that was a tough one for them today they, they didn't deserve to win the game I have to say Blackburn certainly deserves something in that second half but it doesn't matter now it's three points on the board they're top of the table Kieran McKenna will be thrilled to pieces now they move on to Southampton and Norwich there's a couple of incidents in that game that I want your thoughts on Blackburn with two disallowed goals in the game one in the first half that we spoke about where Sammy Swanix was controversially said to be interfering with play then in the second half Andrew Moran slammed it home but Scott Wharton seemed to foul the keeper in the build-up or at least knock the ball out of his hands as they both rose together did you feel that that was what had happened? did you feel that Ladke had enough control yeah. of the ball? Uh, I, I do in the second instance Ollie. I have to say look, we've seen it for many many years haven't we where you make any contact with a goalkeeper you know exactly what the referee on Stuart Atwell on this occasion is going to do he's going to blow his whistle Ladke didn't really know that Wharton was behind him and he did actually make contact with the ball but you can see Haladki had two hands on the ball he wasn't fully in control I have to say that but what's a finish from Andrew Moran who'd just been on the field for two or three minutes so they've had the ball in the back of the net on two occasions this evening and they've got nothing for it but moving forward for Blackburn John Eustace I think he'd be proud as punch of what he saw for his players in that second half and it kind of it stills that bit of confidence moving forward into these latter games to hope that they've got enough to stay above that that dotted relegation line Mickey you say he'll be pleased with the performance but it is still no win 10 games in all competitions now for John Eustace without picking up three points as Blackburn manager my question to you is even if the performances are good how much longer can the run without a win go on well if you look at their fixtures Ollie, it could go on for a long time they've got some really difficult matches coming up Blackburn Rovers and that's the problem is when you're not winning football games the next one that comes around becomes even harder Sunderland have just come off the back of a win this afternoon against Cardiff that's up next up for them at the Stadium of Light it's never going to be easy then they've got Southampton Bristol City who've had a massive win today against Leicester mm. Leeds United and then Sheffield Wednesday who are fighting relegation themselves so it doesn't let up they've got to dig deep from somewhere they've got to get enough points on the board to keep them in the championship next season I can near the Ipswich fans behind you Mickey Kieran McKenna pumping his fists in the air and applauding those away supporters especially with Leicester losing earlier and Leeds still to play tonight of course we'll bring you the action in just a moment Mickey how big a statement is that win from Ipswich Town given the manner in which they've done it well it's absolutely huge Ollie and I, you know I touched on it in commentary it doesn't matter how you perform in these games to the remainder of the season it's just about getting results getting over the finishing line it's not going to be pretty at times but Kieran McKenna might look back at this game and think that's where we got promotion that's where we got mm. automatic promotion because that second half was probably as poor as they've been throughout the whole of the season but they come away with three points they've got a long journey home as well they can enjoy that now they can look forward to playing against Southampton on Monday tick the box with that one if they possibly can because that's another rival next to them and then look at Norwich after that and that's all you can do I've been there myself and when the games come around yes you look forward to them but tick the 90 minutes off hear that final whistle and goals thank you very much Mickey Gray thank you very much indeed Cameron Pope thanks to you as well coming up next here on TalkSport 2 after that win for Ipswich Town at Ewood Park the Leeds United players are warming up in front of us they're raring to respond here at Vicarage Road the live football continues next TalkSport 2 official broadcast partner of the English Football League 
EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Bring on an iconic double act. The classic bacon double cheeseburger and a side of fries. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Like to go one better than Super 6 at Aldi this Easter? Here's Super 7. Potatoes, carrots and sweet. Large brown onions, red and white cabbage, all British. And large garlic. Plus rosemary. Yes? No, the herb. Seven fruit and veg, all just 15p each this Easter. So hop on down to Aldi now. Imagine, it's Saturday. One minute you're lying on the sofa, horizontal, in your pyjamas, trying to guess which celeb is dressed up as a singing chicken, eyeing up the last sweet and sour pork ball, and the next, corn crackers, you're a millionaire. Lotto, will you be next? Play on app, the National Lottery. Account terms, rules and procedures apply, players must be 18 or over. At B&Q and Trade Point, get three for two on interior paint and paint mixing. And four for three on laminate and luxury vinyl click flooring. That's a big spring refresh for less. Shop in-store or online. You can do it when you're being q it. Exclusions apply. End 8th of April. CDLY.com. Nothing beats a jet to holiday. Discovering amazing destinations like Turkey, Greece and Portugal. Staying as long as you like with flexible durations and relaxing in the sun with award-winning VIP service from the Witch Travel Brand of the Year 2023. Book summer now with just a £60 deposit per person. Jet to holidays. Package holidays you can trust. Up to natural protected. Subject to availability and conditions. This Easter at Morrison's, get any three bottles of wine for £18 with over 80 wines and Prosecco to choose from. That's more of your brother's favourite red and your auntie's favourite fizz. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores and online subject to availability. Selected bottles exclude Scotland. End 2nd of April. Please drink responsibly. Kick off your Sunday morning with a weekend sports breakfast on Talk Sport with goals. The free football pullout with the sun. Lace up your boots with the nation's brightest sports breakfast, featuring insider news, big match previews, and expert analysis from Tony Cascarino and Natalie Sawyer. Oh, it's absolutely magnificent! Get fully loaded for football with a weekend sports breakfast, Sunday morning from 6 on Talk Sport with Goals, the essential free football pullout with the sun, every Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. Good evening and welcome to Vicarage Road, the scene for our fourth live championship commentary of the day. And what a day it's been. Earlier on, Leicester City lost again at Bristol City. A fourth defeat in six games for the faltering Foxes. Then QPR scored late on to beat Birmingham City in a proper relegation rumble. That was before Ipswich managed to hold on at Ewood Park to send themselves top of the table. Now, though, it's time for the final act on Good Friday. Watford are the hosts this evening, but they're up against a Leeds United side who look too hot to stop. And the full-time whistle goes, and Leeds United, after three seasons in the Premier League, are relegated back to the Championship. This has been a slow...
centre, Jim Pramford. Three changes tonight. Watford have Jamal Lewis back after a foot problem, while Serata and Bayo are recalled. Shaq Fatanzi drops to the bench after featuring in Georgia's qualifying success over Greece on Tuesday. Morris, who's also carrying a slight knock, is fit enough for a place on the bench. He and Kone, the other two who make way. Good news for Leeds is that Ruta's fit, despite a hernia up during the international break. They left Junior Firpo out after he featured for the Dominican Republic in a match that only kicked off at one in the morning our time on Wednesday. Gruev's out with an ankle injury and Nyonto with a hamstring problem. So there are recalls for Byram, Cooper and James and Ampadu will push forward into midfield. Uh, Watford have been playing a back four uh, for much of the season uh, but it'll be a five tonight we think. Backman in goal, Andrews, Pollock, Sirata, Porteous and Lewis at the back five. Kyambi, Delibishiru and Aspria in midfield with Dennis and Bayo up top. For Leeds, it's Melier in goal. Gray, Roden, Cooper and Byram, the familiar back four. Ampadu and Kamara holding in midfield. James on the right, Somerville on the left and Ruta in support of Patrick Bamford up top. On the benches for Watford, it's Ince, Livermore, Ryovic, Kone, Shakvatansi, Martins, Morris, Greaves and substitute goalkeeper Ben Hamer. For Leeds, it's Firpo, Cresswell, Peru, Anthony Shackleton, Gelhardt, Joseph, Crew, and their substitute goalkeeper is Carl Darlow. Referee tonight, David Webb, who takes charge of a Leeds game for a fourth time this season. They've won the other three, including with a 94th minute penalty against Preston. Jim, thank you. Chris Owellamo is alongside us this evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, good evening, Ollie. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah, good stuff. We don't have to talk about Scotland's international break, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll focus on the uh, championship, Chris. Uh, what a day so far, as we mentioned. Leicester losing, QPR with a late win. That's big down the bottom as well. There was that late draw for Southampton as well. But we're in for a treat tonight, aren't we, seeing Leeds in action. They're in such hot form. Yeah, they are. You know, you, you look at the, the way that they're going about business, absolutely relentless, aren't they? Ruth, ruthless up top, keeping clean sheets, uh, dominating possession. You know, Daniel Parker, in my opinion, a class act. Is uh, you'll, you'll be delighted with his, uh, the way that his, his Leeds United team are, are going about business. You talk about the results today. You know, he doesn't really need to say much in the dressing room before the match. And then it switch winning, just that little extra motivational tool for the players to go out there uh, and, and play the way that they, they've done all season. You know, they have belief and how they go and how they play and, and, and it's and it's bringing a, a, a lot of success what do you make of the team news Chris we just heard it there from Jim Proudfoot a few changes for Leeds United but also starts for Roden Ampadu and Dan James hell of a week for James after his missed penalty saw Wales miss out on the Euros they all played extra time in that game any sense for you that Leeds might be worried there could be some tired legs out there? Yeah, I think it's one of them. Adrenaline as well. You know, the disappointment of, 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 of obviously not, not qualifying. As soon as you walk into that dressing room, and I tell you, Ollie, the dressing room's a harsh place. You know, there'll be a bit of banter going around and straight away. It's an environment that they can be comfortable in. But if Daniel Farker would have, would have assessed them, would have had that conversation with them. Man management is so, so important. And I know every single one of those players will want to then put that... That, right that wrong and go and have success and go and win the championship as champions and this is a fantastic game to, to, to do it so you look at the disappointment from the other night international but they're coming into a, a, an outstanding game and they know that the players are there and, and, and got their back as well Can it be a bit of a refresh as a player as you say if you, if you suffer a bit of disappointment during an international break but then you come back to your club side who are flying in the league and aiming for something brilliant does it almost reset your mentality? Well, I've been there. I've been there. I missed the, I missed the opening goal on my, on my debut for, for Scotland, and I got absolutely torn a new one. You know, when I went to <laughs> when I went back into the, the Wolves dressing room, and I've got to say that uh, it put me at ease. I knew then that I had a point to prove. We were sitting top of the championship at uh, Wolves, so very very similar situation. And yeah, it does reset. The players are professionals, you have to take the highs out, you have to take the lows with the highs and that's part and parcel of being a professional footballer. These players will be ready for tonight and yeah, I think that's one of them. You know the, the impact that they can make, they might get tired after the hour mark but that's something that Daniel Farker will sure, surely assess when that, that, that moment comes. Watford are the opponents tonight, I'd love to bring in Jim Proudfoot on this as well. It's the interim manager Tom Cleverley's first match in charge here at Vicarage Road. He's managed to get a win, they beat Birmingham City last time out at St Andrews. But if we talk about that situation as a whole, 
Valerian Ismail sacked after a run of only one win in 10 league games. It makes him the 19th full-time managerial appointment made by the Pozzo family in 11 years. I guess my question really is, was that sacking because of Ismail's faults as a manager or because of this constant chopping and changing at Watford? Uh, I think that there was an element of the Watford support that felt that the, the change had to be made. I mean, sometimes if you look when they've made as many changes as they have, there are some that you'll point at and say, mm, no, not sure about that as a, as a neutral, as an outsider. Uh, but I think that the Watford fans tell me that, uh, yeah, Valerian Ishmael's time had come, um, that, that a change was necessary. So Tom Cleverly comes in. And it's a, a change of tack, really. He's only 34, obviously. He's been around the club for a long time. He had a very good loan spell early in his career and then came back in uh, 2017. And other fans really liked the way that he rolled his sleeves up. There was never any ego about him, despite the fact he was a former Premier League winner. So he's got a lot of people on his side to start with. Uh, I think it makes sense, the timing of it, because they're, I would say, nine points clear at the bottom three, not in a position they're going to go down there, unfortunately, as far as they're concerned, not in a position that they're going to be fighting for six with a difficult running. So from that point of view, uh, I think that the, the timing was good and I think it was probably the right decision. And Cleverly himself has said that what they have to do is create a situation over the next few games where they actually have something tangible to look forward to next season. Because there's a fear that maybe there isn't at the moment, you know, that last season everybody expected that they had a really good chance of coming up and they started well and then fell away. Only four wins in the last 15 games. This season, their home form has been absolutely woeful. So now it's just let's find something, let's find, try and get the green shoots of recovery in so that over the summer we can build on that and then next season there is a, a, an optimism with a small O coming uh, when the fans are coming back to Vicarage Road rather than a, a, an overwhelming pessimism as the snowball of doom continues to roll and that's where they are at the moment. Chris, do you have Jim right there that it's a shop window really this for, for Tom Cleverley to, to prove what he can do in the dugout for Watford? Well, it's a fantastic opportunity for Tom Cleverley, you know, uh, a great club that's got good history as well in the Championship, fantastic fan base and he's, he's, he's in the club already. He's, he's got that, he'll have that relationship with the players, the staff, he knows how the workings. And as a player, you, you know what, you have an idea of what you might do, what the team needs. So he can implement that, he can tweak little things, have a look at it. But it's a real opportunity for him to showcase what he's about as a, as, as a coach, as a person, as a man manager. And like you say, what, one win out, he win at the minute, so he's, he's ticking the box. But it's about putting that home form right as well. The fans, as a player, yeah, he rolls the sleeves up and he goes out there and he, he has that passion and desire. That needs to kind of, that needs to filter down into the players as well and show that passion and, and then obviously get, get success and results off the back of it as well. Jim, were they to appoint someone in Cleverley's place and that he does end up to just be this interim manager, do you think any potential candidates will look at the Watford job at the moment, see how much topping and changing is going on and think, well, are you going to give me any time? Because I've seen what happened to the fella before, I've seen what happened to the guy before him as well. Does there need to be a change of strategy from Watford in Bro, this I'm going to be really cynical about this and say, yes, every manager will look at it and say, I've got nothing to lose because I'll go in there, I'll give him my best shot. It's a, it's seen as being a basket case of a football club mm. at the moment from outside. And if I only last 17, 18 league games, whatever the average has been over the last five years, then I'm going to get handsomely weighed in for four or five months worth of work. I've mm. got nothing to lose because I get sacked by Watford. Everyone's been sacked by Watford. Mm. That's not going to smirch my CV. Yeah. So from that point of view, I'm being cynical and going, loads of people will be queuing up for it. They can almost rely, can't they, on the reputation of the club rather than their own reputations as a manager. Very interesting stuff. Watford, the host tonight. Uh, we're under the lights here at Vicarage Road. The players warming up in front of us. Uh, I can just see... Uh, the Hornet mascot as well jogging away next to one of the Leeds mascots as well they'll be out ahead of kickoff that comes at 8 o'clock you're listening to the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points 18 plus terms and conditions apply time now though to get the latest odds from William Hill in the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill get epic value all season with William Hill 18 plus be gambleaware.org let's welcome in Alex Dunn from William Hill Alex good evening to you what can you offer us for this game sir I can offer you Leeds as very short price favourites they are 2-1 to one on the draw is 16-5 to five, and Watford are 5-1 to one. you mentioned there Watford being a, a bit of a dangerous side at the minute and I wouldn't want to completely underestimate them Tom Cleverley will be trying to stamp his authority on the side but 
There's a few markets that stand out to me. One of them is Leeds to win to nil. That is six to four. That's landed in Leeds last three games and indeed the last three head-to-heads between these two sides. And as for a goal scorer, I think it centres around Patrick Bamford, who's been in really good form on the road for Leeds. He scored in his last two away from Elland Road. He's 24 to five to score first, six to four to score any time. We've seen some pretty tight games in the championship concerning those sides up at the top so far today. I think this could be another one. I think Leeds will just edge it there. Alex, thank you very much indeed. That's all thanks to William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. In the zone on TalkSport 2 with official betting partner William Hill. Giving you the tools for positive play. Take time to think and know your limits. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. The away end is filling up very nicely here at Vicarage Road. There's hardly an empty seat. and We've still got 11 minutes to go till kick-off. Those Leeds fans enjoying this season very much indeed. And four years ago in the Championship, their side were pulling up trees, sitting top of the league and playing one of the most unique brands of football the division had ever seen. Q to today, they're still top, but this is a very different team with a very different manager. But whisper it. Could this current Leeds team be even better than the ones that brought us Bielsa ball? Time to shot, hits in! Pablo Hernandez wins it for Leeds United with two minutes to go! The way they play, the manner they behave. I follow that coach for a long time and I know how tough it's going to be to play against. You know, what he has done for the, for the, for the club, changes he's made around the training ground, he's just brought a real connection back between the fans and and the players as well. And Leeds needs probing attacking players rewarded. Daniel Farker is a situation where he's done really well at Norwich and in that championship, got him up, so that's what he's got to do now at Leeds. The manager's got such a sort of a unique, special way of playing. There's a lot of attention to detail, both with and without the ball. Right hand corner of the box, cross for Bamford! Heads it home! Magnificent! If you're not performing and you're not you're not putting the effort in day in day out, then then he's the first person to tell you. Chris Willemo, it might feel to a few Leeds fans a bit like sacrilege uh, to say that Farker could even be better than the great Marcelo Bielsa and the, the style of football that he brought to Ellen Road. But let me just read you some interesting stats here. Leeds are 11 points higher in the Championship than they were at this stage of the season in Bielsa's winning team of 2019-20. Uh, and at this stage, oh well, at the end of the season as well, they'd won 21, uh, and this season they've, they've won 25 at this stage. So, actually, when you look at it, Farker's record better than Bielsa, but it's such different styles, isn't it? Well, it is, but th- there has to be a balance. You know, I think uh, with Bielsa, it was 100 miles an hour, everyone bombing forward, leaving holes behind, uh, and, and it was creating chances, scoring goals. Now, Farker's doing exactly that. Like you said, you just went through the records. He smashed every single one of them. But there's a balance there. Yeah, defensively, they, they keep the ball a lot more. They're, they're patient with it. They go forward and very, very quickly. Three, four passes as a attempt on goal or, or, or an end product or a cross coming in. But they're in more control of the game. Whereas when they uh, concede possession or they, they, they lose possession, there's a, there's a discipline to this lead side. Yeah, I thought they were. I thought under Bielsa they were fantastic to watch. Even in the Premier League, we were all buzzing every time they because you knew they were you were guaranteed goals mm. uh, at, at both ends of the pitch. But uh, I think Parker's a class act. Uh, attention to detail is excellent. I think the responsibility defensively he puts on certain players, and when they haven't done it, I think he's he's dealt with them in the right way. And then they've, they've had to tweak the way that they want to play because they want to play in a fantastic lead side. If we borrow some of Jim Proudfoot's cynicality from just now, is there an argument? Oh, well, there's to plenty that. to go around. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh, we know that, Jim. We know that for sure. Uh, <laughs> is the current team under Farker a bit more impressive, simply due to the the sheer competition that they're facing this season? Well, it's, the, the competition is fierce every single campaign. But you look at the likes of Leicester, Southampton, Ipswich that that. For me, he's probably team of the season, where, where, where they are at the minute and what Kieran McKenna's done there. But the competition is fierce. Yeah, but Daniel Farker has been there. Twice Twice he got promoted with Norwich and they ran away with the championship. You know, in the business end of the season, they just knew what it took 
to get the points on the board and, and, and they distance himself from everyone else. With this lead side, there's been consistency there. Mm. He, the way that he holds himself, the way that he deals with the media, the way that he has his players, he is, he is, he, I think he's outstanding. I think they appointed him, it took a bit of time to get him in, but they knew that was the man that they wanted. He's come in and he's, he's been ever present and that consistency has been very telling. It was almost a, a, a cult following really, wasn't it? Of of Marcelo Bielsa there's murals of him around the, the city Jim can you see if Daniel Farker can continue this run with Leeds United get them promoted once more him being as loved as Bielsa was um, no not as loved loved in a different kind of way I think he could be more successful than Bielsa uh, but he's not another Bielsa mm. um, you know the you get cult figures they're not necessarily the best but they just have these um, I, I don't know untangible qualities that make them loved in a different mm. kind of way to us normal people if you like and I think the Elsa was one of those because it, he pushed the envelope for want of a horrible expression but he, he would change things and it was a different way of thinking I remember seeing the Elsa's Chile in, in the World Cup where they played uh, uh, with the ridiculous 3-2-4-1 formation, the first time you've ever seen it. And then now Manchester City have won a Premier League doing mm. doing that effectively a few years on. Uh, but he just pushes the boundaries more than anybody else. Daniel Farker doesn't push the boundaries, so I don't think he will ever be remembered with that same degree of fondness. You've also got to remember, Bielsa was the one that delivered Premier League football back after a long, lengthy absence. Farker, I believe, is going to be able to deliver it, but only after 12 months of an absence. Mm. And so again there's not that same degree of fondness for his achievement can Farker get Leeds to be a consistent Premier League force again in a way that Bielsa couldn't yes I believe he probably can and that would be so so loved by the Leeds United supporters they're hoping that their team can push themselves back to the top tonight Ipswich are there for the time being after beating Blackburn earlier on live on TalkSport 2 let's focus in on this game as Vicarage Road fills up very nicely Chris Oelamo the atmosphere building here as well with the Graham Taylor stand opposite us as well in terms of Watford this evening we said it earlier about the fact that they're not really in danger of, of relegation they're not unfortunately for them pushing on towards those playoff places yep. at the moment given the competition at the moment in the championship so in a sense for them tonight is the pressure off they're taking on a lead side who are pushing and pushing in what has been a ridiculous race at the top of the table if the pressure's off for you as a side can sometimes that make the occasion a bit easier as a player uh, well I don't you look at the formation and I don't think the, that that's the way that Tom Cleverley is looking at it you're playing five at the back you're conceding possession you're, you're, you're basically trying to nullify the, the threat of lead so so it's I wouldn't say yeah you know that they're on the beach already and they've got that freedom and, and just going out to play a, an open expansive game they're trying to Get, they're trying to get the, the win, they're trying to stop Leeds, trying to get a point on the board or, or three points on the board by, by the way that Tom Cleverley's set up but you've got to remember that Tom Cleverley's showcasing what he's about as a manager, as a coach and I think it's important that the players go out I've watched them in the warm-up there, they look very, very lively very all short possession games and, look, and, and, and keeping the ball and moving it very well and it's in that transition tonight that they have to use the ball well because Leeds without it, you know that they go and they, they press in their numbers as a team, as a unit. But if you can play through that press, no matter who you are, you can then get some foothold in the game and that's what Tom Cleverley is demanding from his players tonight. Chris, thank you. You're listening to the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order muck delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. So much live football coming your way on the TalkSport network. The Premier League returns tomorrow. Join Reshman Chowdhury and the team from 11. They're building up to Newcastle against West Ham. Luton travel to Tottenham from three and then Manchester United go to Brentford from 8 o'clock. All of those are live and exclusive on Talk Sport. Easter Monday is all about the championship, though. Leicester take on Norwich in the early kickoff right here on Talk Sport 2. Right now, though, Leeds are looking to get the job done here at Watford and leapfrog themselves back to the top of the championship. Their fans are in full voice away to our right hand side. Vicarage Road is full of noise as the teams make their way out, and we can't wait for the final in instalment of our feast of Good Friday football. Taking you through the action, former Watford striker Chris Oelamo, but first, your match commentator, Jim Bradford.
Thank you very much, Ollie, and a good evening to you for, as you say, the final page of today's chapter in this absorbing, extraordinary promotion race. Leicester beaten again, Southampton denied at the death, Ipswich scraping over the line despite a disappointing second-half performance at Blackburn. So, even before they kicked off here in Hertfordshire, the door has opened just a little bit more for Leeds. Their foot already stretching towards the threshold, thanks to their magnificent run of 12 wins in 13. And having been 17 points adrift at one stage, they're now in a position to move a point clear with just seven games to go. And whilst Leeds have points to take, Watford have a point to make. There'll be very few people at Vicarage Road tonight who haven't been present for the first game of a new managerial reign here before. Tom Cleverley's the Hornets' 18th boss in the last decade alone, inheriting a side ensconced in mid-table as he cuts his managerial teeth. His popularity as a midfielder playing for 12 different Watford bosses, puts immediate credit in the bank, as does the winner Birmingham in his first match in charge. And the fact that tonight represents his first home match at the helm adds an extra element to a night that the form book would otherwise have suggested should be pretty routine. Well, this is the team that cleverly has picked, Backman in goal. And while Serrauta can play in midfield, we think that he'll be playing at the bank today with the Hornets changing to a five. Andrews and Lewis will play at wing back. Pollock and Porches either side of Serrauta. Kayembe, Deli Bashiru and Aspria in midfield. And Dennis and Bayo up front. For Leeds, it's Melier in goal. Gray, Roden, Cooper and Byram. Ambadu and Kamara. James, Ruta and Somerville. And Bamford up front. The benches for Watford, Ince, Livermore, Ryovic. Kone, Chakpatanzi, Martins, Morris, Greaves and Hamer. For Leeds, it's Firpo, Cresswell, Peru, Anthony Shackleton, Gelhart, Joseph, youngster Charlie Crew, and the reserve goalkeeper is Carl Darlow. Referee tonight is David Webb. Photographs just being taken now. The leads away to our right hand side. They're just having their last chat amongst themselves. And Chris Uelamo, I'm delighted to say, alongside him, the former Scotland international. Big man, what are you expecting from this tactically? Because it looks as though it's going to be set up to be attack against defence. Yeah, I think it is, uh, Jim. You know, I'm looking at the way that uh, Tom Cleverley's set his side up. I think there's so much onus on the likes of Ryan Andrews and, and Jamal Lewis. You know, when, when in good possession, can they get forward? Can they use that energy and, uh, and, and quality that they've got to go up and support but end product? But then there's a defensive responsibility for them to sit. Can they keep the likes of Dan James? and Somerville thinking about what they've got to do defensively rather than uh, on the front foot. It's going to be a difficult evening. You know, I think uh, it's all about the distance between the lines for Watford as well. When they go hunting for it, they can't, they can't have too many gaps between the, the midfield and, uh, and attacking lines uh, because Leeds will just pick them off with, with how composed they are in possession. Well, Leeds have won the toss and they've uh, turned Watford around, so Leeds will be kicking from left to right in this first half and attacking the uh, Vicarage Road end of the ground. Uh, Watford in their shirts that are predominantly yellow with some zaggy black sashes down the front. Black shorts, they'll kick from right to left. Their last home league win back in November against Norwich. They came back from 2-0 down to win 3-2 that day. They've only taken three points in nine matches here since then. Well, throughout 2024, Leeds have been marching on together relentlessly, closing the gap to the top as they aim for an immediate return to the Premier League. Having come back from miles back to overhaul leaders Leicester, they can now move a point clear at the summit, providing they can beat a Watford side in their worst run of home form for 20 years. The ball put out of play by Andrews. It's a throw which will be taken over on the Leeds United left. Sam Byron, there were but few doubts uh, Chris, you were telling me about his ability to be able to get through 90 minutes today. Could be a job share between him and Junior Firpo at left back. Yeah, you know what? I think uh, you're looking at Junior Firpo, and I think defensively, the, you know, he's, he falls a little bit short in my opinion. But what he brings in the attacking areas, you know, you can't really question that. Sam Byram, I think, all round is the is a, the better all round player defensively. But yeah, having issues all season with both hamstrings, it is Jim. The Watford have the ball at the back and they have started with uh, three centre-halves. Porteous on the left of the three centre-halves fighting Lewis, the full-back on loan from Newcastle. And Leeds able to clear their lines with Joe Roden. 
A uh, ball out of play. Big night for Daniel James as well. Uh, after everything that happened for him on Tuesday and the huge disappointment, he'll be glad just to be back on the horse 72 hours later. No, you're spot on. I think just to get back to his, his club and have that little bit of banter with, with his players and then all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's, so, he's such a big player for them as well with the, the goals and the how he drives and he's so direct and creates for others as well. Rice Wofford on the front foot, down by the Leeds corner flag. And good play by Emmanuel Dennis has won a throw, which will be taken by Ryan Andrews, the 19-year-old. He'd been a doubt coming into uh, tonight's game as well because of uh, a dead leg. Uh, but he's uh, able to take his place. Uh, an opportunity here for him to uh, launch a long throw inside the penalty area. Almost gets to the edge of the six-yard box. Headed away uh, before Porteous could get in there. Well, cleared back by Seralta. Out towards Andrews again. Work down the touchline for Dennis and Leeds are forced to concede another throw. Couple of minutes in here on Talk Sport 2. Great day for Leeds already, as we've mentioned, but they do need a win to go back to the top of the championship table. Currently, as things stand, two points adrift of Ipswich after their win at Blackburn. And this is Leeds' game in hand. A couple of goals victory for Watford tonight and Leeds would fall back out of the top two I mean it is so close between those top three and Southampton missing the chance to close the gap and put the pressure on those above them as uh, they were held today ball played out towards the Watford left hand side for Lewis and they've had the majority of possession in the early stages and that will be maintained now with a throw that has been won by Aspria Aspria probably the most uh, talented ball player in this Watford team Getting the ball from the throw from Lewis, playing it straight back to him. Northern Ireland International running out of room and then losing possession. And in the end, it took a, a pretty hefty agricultural clearance from Porteous to put the ball out of play for a Leeds United throw. With three minutes in here at Vicarage Road, it's Watford nil, Leeds United nil, Chris. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the way Watford's using the ball, possession, I think being competitive, going winning that, that, that second ball, that free ball there. Uh, and like you're saying, in that transition, using the ball really well. Ryan Porteous said he's, you know, I'll, I'll I love him to bits because he's, he, he goes and gets the ball but he always tries to just leave a little one on, on, on route till there. Uh, got a little smile from Jorginho there. Yeah, you've taught him well. Uh, the ball played <laughs> for down towards James and it's Porteous again right on cue, herring after it, making sure that he uh, got a touch on the ball and maybe just uh, a little touch on James on its way out of play as well. You're listening to Watford against Leeds in the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. It's still nil-nil. Four minutes in. What's been a, a thrilling day of action, not just in the Championship, but uh, down the divisions as well. Some hugely significant results. Shot results, including a, a big win for Carlisle at the bottom of League One, winning uh, today. Uh, at Peterborough, a blow for them. Uh, Porteous playing it forward. Siralta with a little nudge on Bamford as well defended. And then Siralta will turn a high ball forward way ahead of Andrews. Byron will head it away. And then Somerville forced back by Edo Kayembe who ends up fouling. And there's a little angry reaction as well from Somerville and a very delayed fall by Kayembe. There's a push from Somerville, it's probably the shortest man on the field. It was a push with Venom into the chest, and Kayambi stood and looked at him for about a second, and then fell down. Well, Somerville's got to be, he's got to be very, very careful. You know, it's a silly one and, and, and could very easily uh, make the referee. Just don't give the referee any decision to make. Kayambi there, I think, is excellent. You know, really make sure right up the back of Somerville there, putting pressure on. Yeah, you know, having little nibbles and, and that contact frustrating Somerville there. But he's, I love, I love the referees just having a chat to both. But really, uh, Watford are really letting Leeds know that they're in a game. Every opportunity just to leave that little contact, uh, they're, they're, not, uh, they're not passing up. It is the uh, proverbial shot to nothing as far as Watford are concerned tonight. Big game in town, nobody expecting them, including the bookmakers, to get a positive result. Uh, the home form has been so bad, I mentioned earlier, it's their worst championship home form in 20 years so from that point of view you might as well come out and give it a go and if you lose well everyone expected you to lose it's not going to have a detrimental effect on your championship status and they have approached the game well so far the Hornets certainly plenty of pressure on Leeds Porteous heading the ball through the midfield but to Kamara can get his head to it 
and steering out towards Somerville Byram in behind him the fullback is back for a second spell at Leeds United and now Ilan Melier has it if you look at Leeds everything goes goes through Jorginho Ruta if you look at Delhi Bashiru now at the minute just man marking him and it's really frustrating but good players will find a way you know he's, he's, he's basically touched tight he's a metre around him all the time not allowing Jorginho the pass to come in and when it does come in he's making sure that he's there to intercept yeah Danny Bashiru playing in the uh, the middle of the three Watford central midfielders and that's a peach of a pass from him driven out towards Andrews who had the time to control it Dennis playing a little one-two forced Andrews wider than he wanted to go he spotted a deflection so he's happy to let it run out of play and the first corner of the night goes Watford's way they've had the majority of possession through seven goalless minutes and as you say like Leeds concede from set players isn't it you look at Ryan Portis and Alta here you know they are they have got aggressive uh, headers of the ball that will go and be competitive here yep all three goals that they've conceded in the league in 2024 have come from set pieces come back to that in a moment then comes the corner swung in towards the near post leads with first contact not with second Porteous heading it back and Gray was forced to put it behind and out for another corner yeah all three goals but the flip side of those they've only conceded three league goals in 2024 in 13 games one from a free kick next one from a corner and then the last one from a free kick as well so what can Watford do from this second corner? Which Espria will come out to take. Yasser Espria, the Colombian international. Both arms above his head. It's going to be a left-footed away swinging delivery in towards the edge of the six-yard box and cleared by Ruta. Andrews with a, an accurate shot along the deck. Strain to the hands of Melier. Melier then with a very quick clearance. That went straight along the deck as well and was picked up by Watford. Dennis have got it on the edge of the penalty area for the Hornets. Espria. Uh, he's overrun. That's gone out of play for a goal kick. First illustration of just a little bit of panic from Melier. Clearly something Leeds have talked about. Try and hit Watford on the counter attack. Watford committing bodies forward. But in doing so, he just drilled it, barely out of his penalty area, straight to a man in yellow. Well, it surprises me because Melier's distribution is usually excellent. He had so much room for error. You had Dan James, uh, Somerville, that had the full half to run into. But he's tried to kick it into the ground, you know, come over the ball and help me a bit of spin. Just put your foot through it. You know, you had so much room for error. And that's like, like you say, could have been costly. Well, this time he's played it out from the back in a much more circumspect manner. Out towards Joe Roden. Uh, but Ruta couldn't get it to stick and Lewis will be able to bring it forward and Ruta's coming back and Lewis has not quite won another corner his cross came in, took a little nick and Melier was very quick to that and slid out and just stopped the ball going out of play over the line for a corner nine minutes gone Leeds haven't had a sight of Daniel Backman's penalty area so far all of the action has been away to our left but here come Leeds for the first time James to Bamford back towards James he picked the wrong pass because Somerville made a great run on the left hand side of the penalty area and Watford can clear it well it's excellent play wasn't it from, from Leeds there from Archie Gray into, into Ruta the little one touch set to, to Dan James and the little link up with Bamford but Bamford's got to put it in behind uh, you're seeing Somerville but it's a straight pass through to Dan James uh, in between the, the Watford centre backs there you know, it's, it's, just, it's just poor, poor decision making there from Bamford well Leeds now have a throw midway inside the Watford half and we've played 10 minutes uh, 10 minutes in which Leeds United haven't uh, really got going so far it's still 0-0 though here on TalkSport 2 Jim Proudford and Chris Wellamo talking you through the action from Vicarage Road tonight in the uh, presence of your host Ollie Klink as well and the ball out for another throw which uh, Sam Byram's going to take Somerville making a darting run kind he wasn't too sure where he'd gone for a moment and the throw goes towards Ruta now it's down towards Somerville his ball inside the penalty area is headed away by Matty Pollock and then Deli Bashiru turns it through the midfield out towards Lewis and Watford will be able to bring it forward again Lewis checking laying it back to the edge of the penalty area for Porteous now Siralta the Chilean international right footed ball forward from him Bio going up for it Byram touched tight to it uh, it was a really nice piece of control by Bayer that was recognised by the Hornets supporters. Now through the midfield, Kayembe lays it back for Soralta. Soralta taking it to the halfway line. Porteous to his left. 
James comes forward to engage. Porteous gets it between the lines for Emmanuel Dennis. Dennis with a great little turn that took Joe Roden out of the picture. Now played forward out towards the right-hand side for Andrews. Three for him to try and hit in the penalty area. It was cleared by Ampadu. A Watford player goes down. And referee immediately said no penalty. Kayembe, left-footed ball chipped inside the box. Lewis has got it. The Watford player still down injured in the penalty area. Ball played back for Delhi Bashiru. Back to Lewis again. It's up to Watford to put the ball out of play if they want so that their stricken teammate can receive whatever treatment's necessary. And Porteous, a little bit disdainfully in the end, turns and does exactly that. But should there have been a penalty? No, definitely not. You know, I think uh, a Spears got there. Ampadu, for me, he's, he's, his positioning is excellent. His timing of the of just getting his body in, in between ball and man and then just taking the ball away from a Spears there. I don't know if a Spears just rocked the ankle. I'm just looking at it there. Well, I'm looking at that now, you know, Aspria's got there first, hasn't he? Ampadu's already committed to the challenge and comes down on the outside uh, of Aspria's foot. So, you know, looking at it on the monitor, it's a penalty kick, isn't it? Well, the touch from, from whoever got the touch ricocheted away in an angle that would make it look as though it was Ampadu that touched the ball, but I don't think it was. I think Aspria did get in there first. Yep. And Ampadu has almost cleaned the sprayer out stood on the side of the ankle and I think that had we had VAR at this game that would have been overturned and would have been a penalty to Watford but David Webb's four or five metres from there and completely looking at the incident so it's surely surely you can see that a Spears took the first touch and, and there's contact that's the penalty kick no matter how soft you want to see it is well, I don't think it's soft I don't think it's soft I've, I, uh, the referee was in a good position uh, but no penalty and it remains nil-nil. 13 minutes gone. Aspria back on his feet and able to continue. A long ball that's uh, knocked away. Brought down on the left-hand side by Bayo. Aspria will come in off the left flank and turn it back towards the halfway line for Seralta. And Seralta inside the centre circle. Now drives one out towards the right-hand side. Andrews has had a really good start to this game. Popular figure here is a product of the... Watford Academy, indeed the son of a former Watford player, Wayne Andrews. And Cooper clears four leads as the uh, ball comes in, but Saralta wins it back on halfway. And Watford continuing their really good start here. Yeah, using the ball well, aren't they? I think uh, both uh, Jamal Lewis and Ryan Andrews have, have really seen a lot of the ball, but it's, it's what they're doing with it, you know, keeping possession, always an impact, always wanting uh, as, as an outlet uh, and getting themselves into good uh, areas and good end product as well. Uh, they won the last game, Watford, at Birmingham. And that, only their second win in 13 games in all competitions. On the back foot here as James brings it forward. And James running, Porteous stood firm. The ball ricocheted off him. James went to ground after a collision between the pair of them. Porteous just standing firm as he had a right to do. And then Lewis lays it back for him and Porteous will be able to bring it away. Deli Bashiru has got that in midfield. It's a lovely... Deft little turn from him. A sneaking in between Bamford and Ruta. And Dele Bashiru just able to play it forward. Now Emmanuel Dennis back here at Vicarage Road on loan from Nottingham Forest after a successful first spell here in Hertfordshire. Right. And then the ball worked down the line by Andrews. It's a commentator's curse. His first mistake of the night. It's uh, gone out of play for a throw, which will be taken on the uh, Leeds United left. I think Tom Cleverley will be much the happier of the two managers through the opening 15 minutes, though, here. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I think he will be. You know, you look at uh, Dele Bashiru, Kayembe and uh, Dennis, you know, that rotation, keeping the ball. And like you say, always an option, isn't it? Jamal Lewis and Ryan Andrews. And just there, it got away from him a little bit. But in possession, looking, looking very, very comfortable. It's a Leeds throw just in Watford territory. Have won the last three meetings between these two sides without conceding. Ruta, their king of assists inside the penalty area now. A low driven shot. Cannons back off Seralta. Out to Somerville on the edge of the penalty area. He gets a shot in on the turn. And Backman, who's had precious little to do so far, falls into a smart save, diving away to his left-hand side. How to deal with the angle of the shot and also the dip just got something behind it flick it away to his left for a corner yeah I think he's seen it late didn't he Mackman there excellent save just come round uh, Pollock wasn't it a great great strong hand as well I think Jorginho Ruto got in behind done everything right but then he wants to take the shot he's got his, his head up there and try and pick someone out but someone is on to the, to the, the loose ball six leads players inside the penalty area for a corner that must have come close indeed it did curve straight out of play from 
James's delivery. Plenty of whip on it, a little bit too much. He started it uh, too wide. A little bit too much air underneath it as well, probably. Yeah, I'm surprised that he's came round it the way that he, that he has, you know, with the quality that he's got with his feet. Just go away the, with the drive, you know. Put it in there with the, the headers, uh, the, the ball, uh, the players that he's got in there with the, that can go and aggressively head the ball. Here's Backman for Watford. It's nil nil here on Talksport 2. Daddy Bashiru played to his left hand side for Aspria. Aspria just dancing through the midfield, and there's an excellent ball from him out towards uh, Kayembe. Andrews ever willing to get forward. They are playing with three centre-halves, but it is a back three and not a five because they're getting the, the wing-backs forward at every given opportunity so far, Watford. Deli Bashiru back for Porteous. A return ball with uh, Deli Bashiru in possession in the midfield. Just gives him the chance to pick out Lewis. Gray comes forward from right back and engages. Lewis goes back for Porteous. Porteous goes long, far too long as it turns out. Straight through for Elan Melier, away to our left-hand side. Well, I'm loving that the Adele Bashir has seen a lot of the ball, but he's, he's dictating it. He's given the ball to, to uh, Jamal Lewis here, and he's, he's, he's basically telling uh, Emmanuel Dennis, you've got to come into those, those, those areas. You know, the ball's going out, all one-touch stuff from Adele Bashir there, but good, good execution as well. Now, this is our fourth live commentary game for you on uh, TalkSport 2 today from the EFL. But coming up in April, we've got more than 50 live games for you on the TalkSport network, including the extraordinary climax to both the Premier League and Championship title races. A ball knocked away from the edge of the area by Seralta. Leeds can work it back in with Ampadu. James, with his back to the direction of play, just played the way that he was facing and went towards the Kamara. Nice little reverse ball from him. Somerville will be able to pick it up on the edge of the penalty area. Get to the edge of the D and then turn back. He hadn't got too many options. And then Porteous comes across. Somerville stays down, clutching his right ankle. Watford able to bring it away. And the Dutchman's still down. And Dennis will play it out towards the left-hand side. Lewis back to Dennis. And now clear by Ethan Ampadu and out of play for a throw. And Somerville's back on his feet. And the uh, indication from Daniel Backman over to the uh, Leeds bench is he's all right. And uh, Somerville concurs. And will just trot back without the need for treatment. That was a heavy challenge on him from Porteous. Yeah, I'm looking at that. And you know what? I think it is a free kick. There was, the ball wasn't even near. The, the foot of Somerville just kind of spun away from him. And Portis comes down on the top. For me, it was the wrong decision. Somerville was was uh, overplaying, stuck the ball too too much. He's got to just release it a little bit earlier to, to Dan James there. Uh, but the little give and go wasn't, uh, wasn't successful. Uh, Portis to Lewis, to Dennis. And then clip forward again for Lewis. Left-hand side of the box, driven in. And it hits Roden. And goes behind for Watford's third corner. Now, will they be able to ask some more pertinent questions of this Leeds back line? Leeds with everybody back to defend this. Now, it's going to be a Spreer again who will come across to take it. So it's going to be another outswinger. And Watford lining up with Seralta on the edge of the penalty area, repeating away. Porches by the penalty spot, makes a darting running towards the near post. And there's an inevitable collision between him and Kamara. And the uh, referee has given a free kick. Leeds way, absolutely no complaints from Watford's round Porteous whatsoever. <laughs> 19 guys, Watford nil, Leeds nil here on TalkSport 2. And here is the former Scotland striker, Chris Wellamo. Yeah, I think every everyone's back, isn't it, for, for corners against, you know, and they, they have to kind of put their body on the line there. You know, how aggressive that, uh, like, Porteous and Sir, Sir Alter is, you know, but it's, you know, I think it's Leeds haven't really shown up. You know, I think in possession, I think Watford have had the better of it. That'll be disappointing to, to Daniel Farker. They've got to get some sort of foothold in the game. Again, the referee got that one wrong. That was a, a Watford throw, I thought. And so did Ryan Porteous. He was quick to tell the assistant referee on this uh, near touchline that that was the case. And they've had this wonderful run. 12 wins and a draw in their last 13 games. But the draw came against the Huddersfield side in the bottom four of the table. Watford haven't got a great record playing against the, the better sides in the division. Only five points in eight home games against top half opposition so far. But they've given a really good account of themselves here for Tom Cleverley in his first home game in charge. Watford had possession, but they're deep inside their own half. Played for by Bayo. Ampadu's going to be able to mop up, playing slightly further forward today. And with Liam Cooper back in the side to... Yeah. 
replace the uh, injured Ilya Gruev, excuse me, Gruev who has just been struggling, played on international duty in the week for uh, 45 minutes for the Bulgaria against Azerbaijan on Monday, but he picked up an ankle problem and he's missing from the midfield today. And uh, as a result, Ampadu has uh, pushed forward one and Cooper has come back in to, to fill the gap. Roden heads it away, brought down by Kamara. A Kamara, Ruta, lovely turn from him and the through ball trying to release Bamford. As Serralta did enough, he just nudged Bamford and ran across his path to make sure that Bamford didn't have a clear run. He didn't have to do too much to distract him to make sure the, the ball was over hit and he defended it very well. It was the excellent quality from Jejuno Aruto there as well, but he's also asking the referee, David Webb, that, you know, Deli Bashiru's hands are all over him, so I think that's probably why he think he put a little bit too much on that passing behind for, uh, for Dan James. Now, Kayembe's got it in the midfield, but not for long. Kamara with a sliding challenge wins it back. Kayembe just makes a run out of the touchline. Lewis plays the loose ball into him. There's another exchange of passes between the pair of them. And the Congolese midfielder plays it through the legs of Ampadu, but it ricocheted down towards Gray. Leads back in possession inside their own half. And Ampadu with an opportunity to bring it away. And he plays it out towards his left-hand side, where Sam Byron will make the run. Somerville one stop ahead of him down the line, but he is offside. Now, I mentioned that we've brought you four live games from the uh, championship so far today. On Good Friday on TalkSport 2, we've got live motorsport coming your way as well this weekend. For the first time ever, the Formula E World Championship will be broadcast on national radio. And we'll bring you full commentary of the Tokyo e Prix. It's live from Japan. Four different winners from four races already this season. It's a drama guaranteed. You can join the pre-show from 5.30 a.m., with the race getting underway just after six. It's the Tokyo e Prix live from Japan here on TalkSport 2. And we've also got, over the course of this weekend, another four EFL Championship commentaries, live boxing, and the usual offerings in terms of golf and the Women's League Cup final as well. All to come on TalkSport 2. And don't forget the Gallagher Premiership on top of that list once more. Nil-nil here. And we just passed the midway stage of the first half at Vicarage Road. And it's a free kick, two leads on halfway. And Dennis is just being told to uh, at least pretend that he's going to get 10 yards away from the ball before the free kick is taken. It's probably six by the time Leeds ran out of patience and Kamara just worked his square to his right-hand side. Leeds recycle it all the way back via Melier to Cooper. Cooper under pressure from Dennis goes back for Melier again. The... Amiable Frenchman well outside his penalty area. Uh, just indicating where he wanted to play the ball. Somerville obliges, makes a run for him at an angle. Back from him to Byram. Launched long down the left-hand touchline for a Byram's run by Cooper. A strong challenge coming in. Watford have done well to win it back. Delhi Bashiru is in there. Bamford are trying to get a kick. He hasn't had too many so far tonight. Siralta, then Porteous, down towards Lewis on the Watford left. Lewis forced to track back because Ampadu had uh, done a good job and uh, was stopping the ball forward into the feet of Aspria and Lee's doing really well to defend from the front James unlucky but in blocking the clearance he's gone out of play for a goal kick and not a throw right down by the corner flag 0-0 24 goal I have to say I think Tom Cleville will be delighted uh, with, with his defensive unit when they're in a 3 when they're in a 5 I think making the right decisions being brave and staying high you know I think Sam Byram just a couple minutes ago was driving at the defence uh, he passed the ball to Somerville he's offside because they're not dropping they're not, they're not going with Somerville and, 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 and fearing uh, that, that space in behind they're making sure they're staying high and the likes of uh, Ryan Andrews is just coming in and helping Matty Pollock on that uh, on that right hand side left hand side and now play stops because Ruta is down with his right palm on the top of his head and as such referee David Webb is uh, obliged to stop play and a few Watford fans not happy with that uh, but the referee indicating that uh, Root is going to be all right and able to continue. He had this hernia surgery in the international break. But do you think he's 100% fit? I mean, I understand when he's had 15 assists this season, the willingness and almost desperation Daniel Farker to pick him. But do you think he looks 100% fit? Well, he's, he's one of those players, Jim. You know, I think uh, he's, he comes in and out, out of games. But when he does get on the ball, and we've seen little flashes of, of real quality, 
but he is so important everything goes through him in this Leeds uh, United side but they do have the likes of a pro that can sit and play that number 10 who is very very capable uh, and like you say technically very gifted as well so yeah if Daniel Farker's started him then I'm sure that he's wanted to play every minute Jorginho Ruter Asprey is going to take this latest Watford corner it's their fourth Leeds have had one so far it's nil nil another away swinger Ambadu and Kamara both attacking the same ball between them they got it away out towards Andrews who very nearly got caught in possession and seeing white shirts converge on him quickly just hacked it away to safety and out of play for a throw which will be taken on the Leeds right See, I think he's got to be up to speed there Andrews he's against a Leeds United side that without the ball they are going to get in your face one touch and just put it right back into the danger area there for me you know that you've got all your your, your big players your, your big headers of the ball so it's, it's, it's so so important that you have to you have to you have to do it one touch two touch as it stands right now Ipswich top of the championship 84 from 39 Leeds second 83 from 39 this is their 39th game Leicester third 82 from 38 and then Southampton fourth 74 from 37 I think you can probably write them just about out of the the race for automatic promotion now that said Saints have still got to play the three above them away from home they have a good run in those games you never know so it's kind of still in their own hands just about but it probably is a three horse race for two places now and as things stand right now they're just two points between the top three the third place Leicester having a game in hand it will all change many times and we'll find out together over a thrilling climactic final month here on TalkSport 2 and over on TalkSport as well uh, Monday more uh, live games from the EFL Leicester at home to Norwich Ipswich meet Southampton uh, so that's third uh, sorry first as it stands right now against fourth and leads in action at Ellen Road at home to Hull very much looking forward to talking you through that one Monday night that's another 8 o'clock kickoff it's over on Talk Sport for you so Leeds next game at home to Hull a Hull side beaten at home by Stoke today and it's live for you 8 o'clock uh, the other games on Monday Leicester Norwich here on 2 that's a 12.30 start Ipswich Southampton 5.30 and 3 o'clock here on Talk Sport 2 it's Stoke against Huddersfield which is of crucial importance in the battle to avoid relegation and Chris will be there for that game for you on Monday so there's another four live EFL games on Monday in a few moments I'll tell you what's coming up tomorrow over on TalkSport from the Premier League but Leeds will be able to bring it forward here with Byron we've played 28 goalless minutes but it's a very entertaining nil-nil at the moment in which Watford are on top Siralta gets it away and the ball is on the right-hand side with Archie Graham. We welcome listeners from TalkSport with 28 minutes in. It's Watford nil, Leeds United nil. A day where chances have been at a premium. Uh, but Watford have had the better of possession. They forced a raft of corners. Haven't really been able to do too much with them. And neither goalkeepers have much to do. Just one effort from Somerville, which was well beaten away by Daniel Backman. All we've had to show for what, despite that, has actually been a very entertaining opening half hour. Uh, Chris Uellamo, the former Scotland international striker, is alongside me. Chris, what are you made of it? Yeah, I think uh, Watford have been, been outstanding, you know, I think with the ball and without. You know, really kind of... Put, put leads to the sword I think uh, asking the question should have had a penalty as well I think Ampudu uh, came in late on a spree it was an easy decision to make I thought the referee was was positioned very very well for whatever reason he's, he's waved it away straight away uh, but again I think Tom Cleverley you can see that after the, the confidence of the win at, at Birmingham he's, he's implemented certain things he's had time with them on the grass and it's and they're showcasing that using the ball well Jim now it's been a change of shape for Watford tonight as well they've gone with the three centre-halves which is something that they haven't done from the start of the game all season it's worked out really well Leeds just struggling to break them down and create too many chances we're half an hour in the live commentary continues on Talk Sport 2 it's still Watford nil Leeds nil which as things stand We'll have Ipswich, top of the championship tonight. Watford bring it away with Delhi Bashiru. He plays it out to the right. I mentioned there, Chris, it is the first time they've started with three centre-halves in a game this season. The longest that they played with three centre-halves in a game this season was the reverse fixture at Leeds. 50 minutes there in a game they lost 3-0. The ball is inside the area and Dennis is a stunning save. But Bio is there on the follow-up. And Watford lead Leeds by a golden hill. Magnificent save from Melier. Completely in vain. 
First shot came in, he tipped it away. But he came out for Bio. And Bio lashes it into the roof of the next. His first goal in 2024. A 13-game drought ended in spectacular style. Another potential twist in this extraordinary championship title race as Watford lead leads by Golden Hill. Well, it's an excellent goal, isn't it? You know, when the ball gets cut back, Emmanuel Dennis, he struck it so well. It's an excellent save, one hand save from Melee. He's up at it again, but Bio, I've got to say, he had so much time to think about it. It was just all about making sure the connection was right. And boy, was the connection right. Put everything through it, nearly bust the net. Melee had no chance with that one. It's an excellent goal. Well worked from start to finish. Well, great play from Watford, but there will be big recriminations from the Leeds players, from the Leeds coaching staff as to how that happens. The first goal they've conceded from open play in 2024 in nearly 21 hours of football. Where did it go wrong for them? There are huge gaps all over the place. Well, that's it. You know, I think uh, they've not really controlled the game the way that they, they usually do. I've got to say, I think uh, in that transition, I think Watford, as soon as they get the ball, they're, they're direct, they're, they're, they're forcing the issue. They had willing runners breaking the net to get in behind as well, Jim. But it's the quality of pass. The little cut back. Emmanuel Dennis, free. Free on it from the penalty spot. And then he, he gets the shot, connects it, connection with it well. Then all, all of a sudden, Bio is free. That's where you've got to take responsibility. Where's the danger? Can you get close to them? Can you impact them in any way? And they, 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 they didn't do that. Well, his last game, or his last goals, uh, I beg your pardon, were at Deepdale. Well, way to Preston in a very impressive away win back in December. What was it 5 1 that day that, uh, that Watford? Uh, beat the Lily Whites. Uh, he, he got a couple that day, Bio. He hasn't scored since, uh, but he scored here. And it is a goal of huge potential significance. Remember, Leeds win this, they go top. If they would have conceded another goal, they go down to third. I and mean, that's how tight things are with only seven games of this championship season to go. 12 minutes left in this first half. It's what for one Leeds nil. Yeah, that's it. The players will know exactly uh, what is needed. You know, I've got to say, I, I thought they'd have been a little bit more relaxed and go out there and, and, and play the way that they usually do. But it just shows you, you know, this is a business end, Jim. You know, it, it puts different pressures on you, no matter what results uh, as, as went before uh, in, uh, earlier in the day. And Padoue caught in possession. Ball flicked forward. Dennis is in inside the area. Good sliding challenge on him. Enough. Roden doing well. And then Melier could come to the loose ball, pick it up. But Leeds again almost torn apart as Watford brought it forward. And Dennis trying to get in there inside the penalty area. The ball just uh, falling to his feet. And he couldn't make the most of the situation. And that is another moment that could be of crucial importance at the end of the night. Yeah, it's you know, Ampadu again getting caught in possession. And, you know, you're looking at Roden there. He's got every right to have a proper go at the players around him. You don't, especially when you've just conceded a goal. It's important that you you get back to just doing the basics well get the ball be controlled be patient with it because you know that you've got quality in the side that can be a threat in that, those attacking areas <laughs> well this time Watford do get a free kick as uh, Ruta was hoping to be able to bring the ball forward but the referee had spotted an infringement about 15 yards further back and has given a Watford free kick near halfway out towards the right hand touchline that leads forced to get everybody back behind the ball again Watford leading by a golden hill. They started the, the night in 14th. They'd uh, slipped down from their 13th position at the start of the day. Well, this will take them 12 points clear of the relegation zone and to, well, not mathematical safety clearly, but there's absolutely no way they would go down if they win here. Ball thrown high and deep inside the area, too high for Porteous. And goes out of play. Uh, was attacked by Pollock actually in the end I beg your pardon coming at the far post goes out of play for a goal kick and that'll be taken by Melier away to our left hand side Melier's kept 17 clean sheets this season but not able to keep one tonight and Watford lead by a golden hill well you remember that game that they had against Leicester not that long ago a thrilling extraordinary barnstorming Friday night where it took Leeds a lot of time to get going that day they were a goal down for a long time ended up coming back to win it 3-1 Absolutely nothing is decided as yet. Kayambi caught in possession in the midfield by Ampadu. James now. 
just flicking it down the right hand side for Bamford's run uh, Serralta comes across and puts it out of play how do Leeds get Patrick Bamford into the game more because he's hardly had a kick so far yeah well he's reacting to things rather than anticipating it there I think Dan James it wasn't a bad ball just down the, the right side uh, right channel here but he's, he's he's wanting it to feet you know that's where that's where he's got to have that understanding and relationship with, with Jorginho Ruta you know Jorginho Ruta can, can can hang around get in those little spaces but Bamford's got to be stretching the pitch and it, oh, if, if he's making those little runs in behind and it's quality little clip balls down the side then that defensive unit has to drop a little bit Jim and then that creates space in, 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 in front of them now an excellent dynamic run forward from Roden some 30 yards Bamford's got it now Somerville flicked it to him Somerville then gets it back left hand side of the penalty area Byram supplying the width on the leads left Somerville can steer it back out of him. Glenn Kamara has it now, the Finnish international. Former Arsenal man, back out to the left-hand side of the penalty area again. Somerville, right for an effort, and that is a screaming goal. Leads back on level terms within six minutes. Cree Somerville with a goal of immense quality. Cut it onto his right foot and flashes it across the face of Backman. It's Watford 1, Leeds 1. In many ways, they haven't been in the races all night, but that is the mark of a quality side to be able to produce a moment like that when you need it most. And what a moment it was, Jim. What a goal that is. Came from absolutely nothing. Now you're sitting looking at Byron kind of being expansive and, keep, and kind of keeping them wide. Some of them got on the ball. He had three players in front of him. He just opens it up onto his right, manipulates the ball, takes a touch. He already knows where the goal is. The goal doesn't move. But what a finish this is. Just puts it into the, the top right-hand corner. Daniel Batman has no chance whatsoever. Some of will celebrate him before it leaves his, as soon as it leaves his foot. Jimmy's walking away. He's running away. Celebrating that as soon as it leaves his foot. He doesn't even, he doesn't even have to watch it. What a finish. I'm looking at it on the monitor again. Batman is at full stretch. Outstanding goal. Well, the angle that showed it from the other side of the pitch to where we are, where you were behind the shot, made it look even better than it looked from here. Uh, because he got the curl absolutely right. Started it outside the right-hand post and just got it to fade in at the last moment. And from here, it just looked as though the goalkeeper had been done for brute force, but it was even better than that. It was pacey, but so precise. His 17th goal of the season. And it's his first in eight games. He hadn't netted since he... Found the net against Swansea. Now, but he scores tonight and leads back on level terms. They've actually won as many games as they've lost this season when they've been 1-0 down. And I think it's important that they got themselves back on level terms as quickly as they did. Watford looking to restore their advantage. The goal scorer, Bayer, to his right-hand side. Deli Bashiru brings it forward. It was cleared away from Aspria. And Leeds put it out for a throw, which will be taken on that far touchline. But you hark back to the big miss when Watford were 1-0 up there was only six minutes between the two goals it was still time for Watford to miss a glorious chance to double the lead in the middle of all of that and that might be a very big moment yeah it's, you know it's small margins Jim you know at, at, at this level you have to you have to be uh, ruthless and, and clinical when they, those moments present themselves you know Aspria there I, I don't know why he's taking the touch you know he's 22 yards from goal he's central you know just put the foot through it ask the question of, of Mele now Bamford's going to chase Seralta uh, again able to block his run so Porteous can come across and get it back to his goalkeeper and Watford will bring it forward Porteous ending up on the right hand side of the penalty area he's playing on the left of the three centre halves for Watford but he's played it across the edge of his box safely to find Lewis Lewis with a really good run gets goal side of Gray work forward from him Bio if he was onside might have been in a really good position to get a shot in a sliding covering challenge good enough puts the ball out of play for a corner flag stay down and Watford have another set piece as they look to restore their lead five minutes from half time the game's really exploded into life at 1-1 that's excellent quality down the left hand side you know Aspria and, uh, and Lewis uh, linking up very very well but end product by all just he just tried to make the run down the outside in comes the corner from Aspria it's very deep Headed back by Pollock, looking for Porteous, cleared by Ruter, left-hand side of the penalty area, Dennis will pull it back, Lewis with a high ball towards the far post where Seralta was waiting, but it's clear from him. Danny Bashiru now, back for Andrews, Andrews the deepest of the Watfield outfield players, and he whacks it towards the left-hand side of the box where Somerville comes across to head it away. And it goes out for a throw that will be taken by Watford on left. Lewis has got it. Five minutes to go to half-time. 
Watford 1, Leeds 1. Perceptive ball in towards the near post is clear. Pollock was still forward from the last corner, but he couldn't get on the end of it. Byram sort of that, and he puts it out of play into the lower rows of the Graham Taylor stand over on the far side for another Watford throw as they try and turn the screw again to re-establish the lead. Yeah, well, like you see, I think... Uh... Uh, Leeds are a little bit rocky, aren't they? You know, I think usually in composed, even under a good press, use the right the the right decision all the time, keep possession, try and play through the thirds. But Watford have them uh, have them rocked definitely. Porteous for Delhi Bashiru. Delhi Bashiru running towards the edge of the penalty area, shuffles the ball across in the face of uh, Glen Kamara. And now Aspria down towards the left-hand side. Lewis consistently finding space there. Diving heady clearance from Ampadu. Hit a teammate, but uh, will uh, bounce to safety. And then great work leading the line off the ball from the uh, Watford forwards. I think it was Bio that uh, Dennis, I beg your pardon, came across and closed down so quickly. And uh, the Watford fans really appreciating that. The ball's gone out of play. It's a throw which will be taken on the Leeds right. Three and a half minutes to go to half-time. Watford 1, Leeds 1, Bio on 31, some of the equalising on 37 with uh, one of the certainly goals of the month in the championship, if not one of the goals of the season, when you add the context to it as well. Watford work it back, Pollock, former Grimsby defender, finding his goalkeeper, uh, not forward away, Kamara to Byram. Byram to Somerville, Somerville, plenty of time to turn and he's just trying to chip one over the top of Seralta for Bamford's run. But it's cleared and it's Tom Daly Bashiru bringing it forward again. Ran into traffic but was able to lay it off for Kayembe. That created space for Aspria. Aspria coming forward. Gray's backing off Aspria with a left-footed effort. Uh, deflected off Roden and goes behind out for another corner. Yeah, much better. Much better from Aspria there. I think Daly Bashiru and uh, Kayembe just, just controlling it. You know, every decision, the ball was in front, Bashiru takes it, he's driving at goal. Yeah, but 23 yards from goal at an angle. Didn't get the right connection, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it. The, the little deflection could have uh, wrong footed there, Melee as well. So you, you've got to you've got to uh, take the shot on when it presents itself there. So a spray will come across to take this corner. It's 6-1 in terms of corners now in Watford's favour. 1-1 the scoreline. So it's going to be another away swing, I think. Five of the six corners so far have come from this left and have been away swingers. Plenty of movement again towards the edge of the six-yard box and the header from a Watford player just ends up in the hands of Melier. It was a Pollock that leant back and met it with his forehead. He was slightly off balance so he couldn't get the power he wanted. And it was a more routine save for Ilan Melier than it might have been. Leeds will play out from the back. Kamara under immediate pressure from Kayembe uh, gets it forward towards halfway Somerville forced to trap back inside his own half Pollock's followed him every step of the way but had his shirt his hands all over Somerville's shirt and the Leeds United goal scorer has won a free kick which they've taken and worked intelligently the idea was right down the left for Byram's advance run but Serrata could easily come across and cover it Pollock almost caught in possession by Ruta and he'll get it forward over halfway. Great jump by Dennis because he's not the tallest, but he climbed over Cooper to win that header. And now will push forward. He's inside the penalty area. Dennis, faced up by Cooper, gets a left footing shot in and belts it into the bottom left-hand corner. It is another brilliant goal. Emmanuel Dennis with a celebration to match the quality of the strike. And in the last minute of the first half, Leeds trail again. Watford 2, Leeds 1. Well, that's excellent. He's, he deserves it, doesn't he? He made it all himself there. Goes and wins a, a ball he shouldn't really win. Kaemi gets the ball and puts them in, uh, in behind. He's got a lot to do, Jim. A lot to do up against Cooper and uh, Ampadu there. But he just opens the goal, manipulates the ball onto his left-hand side. And you know what? He puts everything through it. I'm looking at the goalkeeper there. Can he do better? It struck really well, but Melly on his, his right hand, you know what? It struck, it struck really, really well. And I'm just looking at there's movement on the ball, a little dip as well. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one for Melly as well. I think Ampadu and uh, Cooper have to do better and try and get some sort of contact on there, uh, Emmanuel Dennis. But what a finish that is, and deserved as well. Well, they hadn't conceded, as we mentioned, a goal in open play in nearly 21 hours. They've now let in two in 13 minutes. <laughs> and it's Watford 2, Leeds United 1 and Dennis who got the winner at Birmingham in Tom Cleverley's first game has now, at a very similar time in the game 
restored the Watford lead in Tom Cleverley's first home game. 2-1 Watford. Dennis's fourth goal of this loan spell. Leeds looking for another quick response. Ruta can't find a way past Pollock. Oh, he's won it back. He's done really well. Great persistence. Drags it inside the penalty area. Gets a shot in towards the near post. He stayed down injured. That was blocked by Batman. And the ricochet fell Watford's way. And now they will bring it forward. Uh, Dennis is uh, going to stop. Actually sees that Ruta's back on his feet and then plays on. We're at the end of the first of three additional minutes. You would talk sport too. Uh, it's been a fantastic day of action today. What a good Friday it has been. And um, we might just be saving the best to last, you know. Watford 2 leads 1. The goals, uh, particularly goals 2 and 3, have been of huge quality. Cooper. Out to Byram on the Leeds United left. And then Cooper goes back to the goalkeeper. Midway through stoppage time. Melier playing it forward. Roden can turn. And he'll bring it forward and find Glenn Kamara. Kamara's ball up the left-hand side. Leeds with only the fourth best away record in the championship this season. But they are taking on a Watford side who have the third worst home record. You'd never know it from the way they played tonight. There's been a great pattern of play about them. There's been a great intensity to them. And they've asked some really, really big questions of the side with the best defensive record in the division. And they've got another free kick now, which they will uh, run the clock down before they take to make this the last action of the first half. It's a free kick which Andrews is going to take over on the right-hand side. It's only about a yard in from the right-hand touchline. Or is he not given a free kick? It is a throw, actually. I beg your pardon. A throw which Watford will take. So Bio showing for him. Wanting the ball into feed, it's uh, launched that little bit longer instead, and what forget another throw. And Andrews will, again, just run a few seconds off the clock, picking up the ball, takes it down towards the corner flag, and now prepares to hurl this inside the box, into the feet of Bayer, back for Andrews again. Somerville, picking up the loose ball, he clears it right-footed, only about 10 seconds left of the three minutes, Seralta high up and under from him towards the edge of the area it was a shove a clear shove from Dennis on Roden and it's a free kick that leads on the edge of their own box there'll barely be time to take it and Watford are going to have a half time lead yeah I think it's and thoroughly deserves him it's a standing ovation for the Hornets as they leave the field they have been superb so much possession so much attacking intent more than happy to take the game to Leeds Bio putting them ahead they missed a great chance to make it to Somerville with one of the goals of the season tied it up at 1-1 but Watford came again and Dennis with a brilliant well-worked goal restored the Watford advantage just before half time Leeds have seen Leicester lose today they've seen Southampton drop points late on they've seen Ipswich stumble over the line in their game Leeds not able as things stand at the moment to take advantage themselves right now they're second in the table it's Watford 2 leads 1 what an intriguing game we have here Watford taking the lead again just before half time and they are asking some serious questions of Leeds United Chris Uelamo though as Jim just said there in commentary we have been treated tonight haven't we some amazing strikes let's talk about the first goal though from Bio just after the half hour mark it was coming wasn't it with the way that Watford were playing and a lovely finish as well given that that was such a brilliant save from Melier from Dennis's initial shot yeah it was outstanding a fantastic save wasn't it but the goal was coming I think the they've shown real quality haven't they when, they when they've got the ball without the ball as well they've been organised compact and then they, when they go and press they press as a unit as well but what I've been so impressed is about is, is, is when they're in possession you know they're, they're, they're keeping it they're, they're, they're setting little traps for, for leads and then they're, they're going with quality and pace in behind and they've got that end product you know the pass back to, to Emmanuel Dennis the shot and then Bayou in the right place at the right time but you can go through all the quality I think Ryan Andrews and Jamal Lewis have been ever present Any up and down both flanks and like you see defensively doing their job uh, as, as well so I think Tom Cleverley has got it spot on at the minute he said something before the game about will they be relaxed because they've got nothing really to play for 
Well, they're looking very relaxed at the minute, but they're really putting leads to the sword at the minute and controlling the game. It's interesting because before the game, we said that starting with that back five maybe suggested that they would let Leeds come and play a bit. But as you say, with the full backs, with some of their attacking play, Watford have been really positive tonight. Yeah, every opportunity. I think that goes down to KMB and Delhi Bashiru. They're always wanting the ball. And, you know, in possession, they've been, they've been great. They've allowed the likes of Ryan, uh, Ryan Andrews and Jamal Lewis to kind of be a little bit more expansive, a little bit more advanced. And that back three, you know, I think they've been, they've been outstanding. So now it's talking, communicating all the while, but stepping up, being really, really compact with the, with, with the midfield uh, unit in front of them. And all that does, it makes it difficult for the likes of Bamford to receive the ball, Ruta to receive the ball. And I've got to say, Dan James and, and Somerville, even though they're, they're, they're seeing a lot of it, they're not going anywhere. They're running into basically a, a, a Watford wall. And I think defensively, they've, 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 they've picked that box, Watford. You're right, Chris, because it was some finish, wasn't it, from Somerville to get Leeds level. Sure. But let's be honest, it came from nothing really, didn't it? Well, that's it. You know, I think uh, I think Sam Byron was hugging the, 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 the sideline and then as soon as Somerville got it, there was bodies in the box. It wasn't going to be a cross coming in, but it, it, it came from absolute nowhere whatsoever. It's not been the, the, the usual lead performance in that attacking area where it's chance after chance. But Patton's really not had too much to do. It was an earlier little shot from Somerville that he's, that he's got his hand to. Other than that, I think Ruta came out and he's, he's, he's came out and, 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 and marshalled it well. But it's not, it's not the usual lead performance, but that's down to how well Watford have defended. You know, they've nullified that threat and then in, in, in doing that, they've been, they've, been, they've been very threatening themselves. So Tom Cleville would be in there saying, the same again, boys. I want you to go out and pr produce the exact same performance and you'll get three points tonight. Talk to me about the Emmanuel Dennis goal because <laughs> I want your thoughts on the build-up play as well because he leapt in the air to take the ball out of the sky in the middle of his own half. Reminded me of a young Chris Ouellema, <laughs> I must say, actually. But then gets it down. It's all about that positive play, isn't it? He takes it into the box. But is there a question over that Leeds defending? They're letting Dennis come on to him. Could they have been quicker to get out to it? You're spot on. So Liam Cooper, he comes over the top and he wins the header. But as soon as he wins the header, he gets down. He goes and hugs the line. Kayembe comes on to it and gets him the ball. Now this is where I, I think Cooper for one's a little bit too relaxed. If it's Ampadu has got to then go and force the issue with Dennis, allowing Cooper to get back into a defensive position. But they're, they're both coming towards the goal, allowing Dennis to get into the box. As soon as Dennis gets in the box, that, you can't go and make that, that, that contact. Yeah, go and give a free kick, go be aggressive. Keep him outside the box. As soon as he comes in, he minutes, it's the ball onto his left hand. I still think he gets the shot away far too easy, Oli. But I think defensively, uh, Leeds need to do more to, to, to protect the goalkeeper Melia there. Because I gave Melia a little bit of stick, but after seeing it, there's not a lot he can do. Mm. You know, so can Ampadu, can uh, Cooper go and get a block one, get some sort of contact into the man near Dennis? But it's an excellent goal, you can't take anything away from it. Mm. We haven't even mentioned, by the way, Chris, there was an incident. 11 minutes into the game, Yassir Spreer coming down in the box under Ampadu's challenge. This was at nil-nil, yeah. but both you and Jim Brownford felt that Watford should have had a penalty kick as well. Well, looking at it on the monitor, when, when I'm looking at open play, I thought Ampadu had got there, but Spreer had, all, it, 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 it had overstretched, got touched of the ball, and then Ampadu came on the top of his suit. David Webb, the referee, is in a fantastic position. I don't know how he cannot give a penalty kick. Mm. I don't know how he cannot give it, because he's seen it, he's not a his view's not obstructed in any way. He's, he's got the view. He waved it away straight away. Yeah. He waved it away straight away, Ollie. Which if is he's crazy. he's got the view, he's got the perfect view. His position was excellent. So his officiating position was outstanding. Mm. That is a penalty kick all day long. Yeah, because he can see a spreer get to the ball first. Yep. And therefore the fact that Ampadu has fouled him. Anyway, what a half of football. It's been more to come here at Vicarage Road. There's some concerned looking Leeds fans in the away end at the moment. We may have some result on our hands if it stays this way yes Ipswich fans you might end the day at the top of the table half time here it's Watford 2 Leeds 1 we're bringing the second half next TalkSport 2 official broadcast partner of the EFL EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's fancy a Big Mac for the big match order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too 18 plus rewards account required participating restaurants subject to availability delivery fees and terms apply at Honda we've been engineering cars for over 70 Four. 75 years actually we know that excellence takes time so you can rely on the Honda engineering in the all new ENY1 with a range of up to 250 miles on a single charge and up to five years warranty, servicing and roadside assistance. Our first electric SUV, the ENY1. Oh, a hole in one. Yes. Honda. 
The power of dreams. Range based on test conditions and may vary. With now, you can stream all the drama of the Premier League instantly and without a contract. Absolutely brilliant. This Sunday, all three title contenders are in action as Liverpool face Brighton at Anfield before Man City take on Arsenal at the Etihad. Can you believe it? Get all Sky Sports channels for a day or a whole month with a Now Sports membership. Stream the race for the title live this Sunday from 2 p.m. Head to nowtv.com. 18 plus Sky Sports content stream. Little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores GB only. At BQ and Trade Point, get three for two on interior paint and paint mixing, and four for three on laminate and luxury vinyl click flooring. That's a big spring refresh for less. Shop in store or online. You can do it when you're being Q it. Exclusions apply. Ends 8th of April. CDLY.com. Nothing beats a Jet 2 holiday. And right now, families can save up to £240. Imagine a family getaway to Turkey, Mallorca or Lanzarote. Staying for as long as you like, with flexible durations, all while enjoying award-winning VIP service. Book now, with just a £60 deposit per person. Jet 2 holidays. Package holidays you can trust. Aptronational protected. Subject to availability and conditions. TalkSport 2 is your dynamic destination for all the latest sporting action. Featuring live commentary of all the biggest events, including football, PGA golf, horse racing, premiership rugby, cricket, boxing, and all the big hitting drama of the NFL. Plus, TalkSport 2's official betting partner, William Hill, is always on hand with the insight and in-depth analysis you need. TalkSport 2 with official betting partner, William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. On DAB Plus, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. This is EFL Live on TalkSport 2. I'm Ollie Clink. Good to have you with us. Some game here at Vicarage Road. Watford applauded off to a standing ovation. They lead high-flying leads by two goals to one. We've been treated to some absolute stunners as well. Bio gave Watford the lead half an hour in. Somerville responded for Leeds with some goal. He bent it into the top right-hand corner. And then Emmanuel Dennis with an excellent solo effort put Watford in front just before half time it means so much for the top of the championship table but let me just run you through some of the scores from today earlier on live on TalkSport 2 we've brought you so much championship action today Bristol City ran out 1-0 winners over Leicester elsewhere it was Millwall 1 West Bromwich Albion 1 as well uh, Cardiff lost to Sunderland 2-0 Huddersfield 1 Coventry 3 was another of the score lines today Hull 0 Stoke 2 Norwich 2 Plymouth 1 Preston 3 Rotherham 0 Queen's Park Rangers 2, Birmingham City 1, that was also live on TalkSport 2. Late goal from Jimmy Dunn, big goal for QPR down at the bottom of the table. Heartbreak for Blues late on in that game. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Swansea City 1 at Hillsborough. Southampton uh, succumbed to a late equaliser from Middlesbrough as well. That game finished 1-1 at St Mary's. So many chances for Southampton in that game. That leaves them adrift in fourth place from the top three as well. And earlier on in the 5.30 kickoff on TalkSport 2, Ipswich Town clung on to beat Blackburn Rovers at Ewood Park by a goal to nil. And at the moment, that means that they are top of the championship table. They're two points ahead of Leeds United. They're on 84 Ipswich Town. Leeds behind on 82 as it stands. They trail to Watford 2-1 here today and Leicester City after that loss to Bristol City earlier on they are also on 82 points and sit in third place uh, let's hear shall we from the Leicester City manager who did have the chance to go top earlier today as I mentioned it was live on TalkSport 2 after the match the Foxes manager Enzo Maresca spoke to TalkSport's Nigel Adley Do you feel you deserved anything from that game today? Uh, <laughs> We create so many chances, we miss. At the end, I just said, football, it's a matter of take chances. But, uh, yeah, it's what it is. How do you rebuild confidence with so many games coming up now in a quick space of time? Yeah, no, uh, it's never good to lose game. 
but now in 72 hours we have one more game and the only thing we can do now is just to recover it, the energy and try to win on Monday. Of course, you were so good for so long at this level. How, how do you recapture that? Do you, do you go back to something you were doing earlier this season? Or? No, I just said, when you lose a game and you don't create, you have to be worried. For sure, even when you create and you don't win game, you have to be worried. But uh, today, once again, we create many chances. Already happened in the last defeat we had. But uh, it's football and can happen. And you've got games to play still. You've got the opportunity to recover here. But... Um, does something drastic need to happen or is it just a case of taking chances? No, I think uh, uh, also you have to be a little bit lucky when you have a chance but uh, when you create chances for sure very soon we're going to take the chances uh, today happened with Jamie that in his life scored all, always goal so can happen, can happen And Vardy of course has been so good for you recently the, the one person you thought would score those opportunities would be him yeah, but that's that's why I said that it's football and can happen to Jimmy, can happen to Daka, Kelechi, Cannon, all the strikers. They create chances. Also, we have chances with uh, Abdul, but uh, can happen. And just finally from me, when you went over to see the fans at the end, the, the, some of the fans were very angry with you and the players. Can you understand that? No, yeah. It's, uh, now you can understand that because it's the final rush. They want to win, but also we want to win. The effort from the players was, uh, again, once again, very good. So... We can understand that they were not happy, but in the same moment, the players, they gave everything. You'll need the fans now on Monday and moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. We need them, especially in this moment. Enzo Maresca there, frustrated after Leicester City lost earlier on today. Let's bring in the former Watford striker, Chris Uelamo. Interesting comments there when Nigel asked him about the fans' frustration at the end of the game. There were some Leicester fans, when the players went over to applaud them, who said, you know what, get back in the dressing room, because that's four defeats from six games for them. And in commentary, Nigel actually said, this is a Leicester season that is somewhat unravelling. Would you agree with that, Chris? Well, you have to agree with it, don't you? I think... Uh, you look at, uh, I think, the Leicester fans, I think the reaction may be a little bit harsh. Yeah, but you can understand the frustration. They've had it so good for so long and the, the wheels have kind of fallen off a little bit. But when when Nigel asked those questions and a manager has to answer, I, I thought he dealt with it very well. You know, because he's talking about, he says, I'd be more frustrated if we weren't creating chances. You know, that Leicester side could have been out of sight today against a, a Bristol City side, albeit when I was listening to the commentary, you know, I think uh, Adrian was saying it was a, it was a thoroughly deserved uh, win for Bristol City, but Leicester had big moments, big chances, and that's where they're falling short, even against, you know, they've dropped points where they should be putting teams to bed, and uh, that's the business end of the season, the games are running out, they have to get back to winning wins very, very quickly. Yeah, you heard that game live earlier on TalkSport 2. Remember, we're doing this all again on Easter Monday and Leicester are in action at 12.30. They face Norwich. That's on TalkSport 2. Live and exclusively. The teams are back out here, though, at Vicarage Road. There is work for Leeds to do. They trail Watford by two goals to one to take you through the second half. It's the former Watford striker, Chris Oelamo, and your match commentator, Jim Pram. Thank you, Ollie. No changes in personnel made by either manager. Ahead of the second half, Watford lining up Bankman in goal, Pollock, Serralta and Porteous, Andrews, Kayambe, Deli, Bashiru, Espria and Lewis, Dennis and Bayo, who both scored, and for Leeds it's Melier, Gray, Roden, Cooper and Byram, Ampadu and Kamara, James, Ruta and Somerville, the scorer of the Leeds goal, and Bamford. And we're back underway, and Leeds kicking from right to left in all white in this second half. Watford in their famous yellow and black. And they're defending the rookery. Away to our left-hand side in this second half. Seralta having to uh, give chase. A long leads ball for Pundit towards Bamford. And he goes out of play for a throw which will be taken on the uh, Leeds left-hand side. We saw the formations. We saw the, uh, the personnel that Tom Cleverley had picked. And... Uh, I'm more than happy to admit that I completely got it wrong because I said before the game started it would be attack against defence. To a certain extent it has been, but just not the way around that we thought. Watford have dominated possession. They've had slightly more shots. They've had way more corners. 
And let's be honest about it, Chris. They're very good value for a 2-1 lead. Yeah, I agree with you, Jim. I, I, I made the exact same mistake. You know, you're sitting thinking the five at the back, you know, concede possession, play counter-attack football. It's not been the case. You know, I think that defensive unit, it's been more so a three, hasn't it? You know, they've been in control. Those, those uh, wing-backs have been, uh, been, been very advanced. And every time they get the ball, they are causing leads all sorts of problems. Now Somerville. Trying to get around the back of Pollock and he's managed that. Still he has it, stabs it in towards the six-yard box. And it's caught by Backman at his near post. But that was an excellent injection of tempo from Chris Somerville getting the better of Matt Pollock who was left on the deck. Yeah, he got the better of him, but he's still off balance. And I just that extra touch after he got round the back uh, of, of Matt Pollock there, it just kind of offset him a little bit there and he's tried to kind of put it into the box with outside of his right foot. Whereas if it's under control, he's actually going at Serie Alta there. It's Kayambe to Deli Bashiru, turning beautifully in the midfield. And he's got the option of playing it out towards Lewis on his left-hand side, and he's picked him out. Now Bio's waiting in the middle. Spree was coming in as well. Lewis with the ball in. It's uh, well defended by Archie Gray, but out of play for another corner. And they had six to Leeds, one in the first half, and they've got the first of the second half as well, Watford. Yeah, I want more from Jamal Lewis. I think he's been excellent, but there he's, he's up one and one against Archie Gray. I think he's got to be direct, take it to the line. He's run at an angle. Archie Gray's back and back, backing up all the while. I think he's got enough about him, Jamal Lewis, to get round, even just create that yard to have the end product. Six in the penalty area for an away swinging corner, which is headed wide by Matty Pollock. The first contact from a Watford player again. That's happened a few times. Yeah, but it's a big, that's a big chance, Jim. You know, I think he's he's used his body well. He's he's, he's got the space. He knows where the goal is, and he's just try. He has to generate the the power himself there. You know, if he if he gets that on target, then yeah, that's uh, that's asking a question of Amelia there. Nah, he's still waiting for his first Watford goal uh, since he signed from uh, Grimsby as a teenager. Haven't had that many opportunities. In the grand scheme of things, it's only his seventh start tonight. He's playing in the uh, continued absence of Wesley Hoot, former Southampton man who's uh, missing through suspension. He's serving the, the second game of a two-game ban today because he's picked up ten yellow cards. Here's Roden, another that was involved. He played the full 120 minutes for Wales against Poland on Tuesday, and that might end up being a factor of the international duty that uh, some of these Leeds players went through. James, of course... Had a very emotional night the the, uh, the other night. Ampadu and Roden played 120 minutes in that game. Yeah, it'll take its toll, of course. You know, I think that's something that Daniel Farker would have wanted the, the job to be done first half and then looks at the bench and uh, it makes those changes, but they're very much in a game tonight. Throw to be taken up the Watford right-hand side by Matty Pollock, headed back by Byram, and then Cooper stabs it high up in the air. Ampadu heads it further forward. Watford win it back. Laid by uh, Spreer. Uh, back to the edge of his own penalty area. Porteous thrashes it forward. Lewis does well to field it and control it and uh, just plays it straight back again. Now via Deli Bashiru, Watford are able to make a little bit of progress. Kayembe. Deli Bashiru able to turn in the midfield. Get it onto his right foot and then play it back to the edge of his own penalty area. Porteous, the brisk ball that had a little awkward bounce to it but Backman was able to get it away what for goalkeeper making his 100th league appearance for the club today and they've got it again in the midfield with the ball laid down towards the right hand side for Andrews Andrews Ford over halfway here's Dennis the score of the goal that at the moment is the match winner for Watford he's played it square to his left hand side as Spreer can work it to his left now Lewis with time to shape and get a decent ball in taking on Gray and again he's whacked it straight at him when there were a couple of Watford players waiting for a pullback on the edge of the penalty area that's the decision isn't it Aspiria is there you know if he cuts it back Aspiria's definitely taking a touch and getting the opportunity away but again Dele Bashiru just getting on the ball making things happen always an outlet always want the ball no matter how tight he's marshalled and he's having a lot of success tonight uh, well I had a conversation with a Watford fan at half time and felt that this was the, the best 45 minute performance that uh, Watford have had since they uh, put three past Liverpool in the first half of the game uh, a few years back I mean that is how good it has been and it's credit to Tom Cleverley that he's been able to be able to engender this kind of reaction in a game that as we mentioned earlier ostensibly doesn't mean a lot for Watford as far as the season is concerned plenty for them going forward but the fact that he's been able to get this kind of performance out of them as quickly as he has in this managerial range is a huge credit to him it just shows the importance of a win Jim doesn't it you know against Birmingham and then having time on the grass with international break as well so 
Well, they haven't won this one yet, though. Ball play for Byram to Somerville. Somerville inside the area and forcing Backman to pour it away at the near post. And he goes out of play for a Leeds corner. Well, I think it's excellent from Somerville. Don't have an issue with them getting the shot away there, but you look at Bamford, look into the skies, proper had a go as well. You know, in, in hindsight, you think, you know, it's, it is an option. He can get his head up and pass it across, but he's, he's probably about five yards from goal at an angle, but he's trying to just sneak it in that, uh, that near post with the outside of his right foot there. The corner will be taken on the Leeds left. It's only the uh, second that they've had today. Somerville just adjusting the ball, leaning down, and uh, putting both black gloved hands to the ball happy with where it is now takes a short towards Kamara back for Somerville again better angle is rolled across the edge of the penalty area James takes a touch his second touch took him away from a shooting position and then he's lost possession but the referee said that was by foul means not fair and it's a free kick to Leeds about six yards from the bottom right hand corner of the penalty area 2-1 Watford yeah the referee uh, David Webb got that one right Jamal Lewis yeah, he got contact with the ball, but he did come through Dan James. It was a well-worked corner as well. I think some of those ball put a little bit too much on it, but I'm expecting James to come on and and, uh, and take that maybe first time. He's took a first touch away from goal. He's got a lot of, a lot of work to do, especially the way that uh, Watford came out uh, defensively to press and, and put him under pressure there. So Somerville standing over this free kick. And nearly everybody, certainly everybody from Watford back inside the penalty area, nearly everybody forward for Leeds. They've left Gray back. Uh, they've got James and Kamara just outside the box. Somerville taking it, right footed, really deep. Roden coming round the back, heads it in, and it's headed. And then cleared off the line by Seralta. Uh, but the flag was up anyway. And I think the ball had just curved over the line out of play for a goal kick before the header from Joe Roden back across the six-yard box. Well, I've got to say, I don't know how the linesman would have made that decision from where he was. It's never been out, Jim. The ball's never been out. I don't understand how the, the linesman can make that decision. I'm looking at it on the monitor here. And the, the ball's never been out here. You're going to correct me if I'm wrong here. Never been out. It's a foot in. How can the linesman put his flag up there anyway? Well, academic in the end because they're out to clear it off the line. But there would have been a huge inquest if that had been chalked off for that. If uh, Serralta hadn't been there to steer the goal-bound header away. Now Dennis chasing at the other end, but Roden has come back and has been able to mop up. Melier will take over. Melier, uh, a veteran now of more than 160 games for Leeds United. He's got the Leeds fans at his back. 2,100 have made the journey down from West Yorkshire for this. Leeds next in action at home to Hull, 8 o'clock Monday night. And we've got that one live for you on Talk Sport. Another four EFL commentaries for you on Monday, including Ipswich against Southampton, two of the top four in action, and Leicester hoping to get back to winning ways at home to improving Norwich, who are in the playoff positions at the moment. Another belting day of action. And it's all coming your way on Monday. And I'll tell you what's coming up in the Premier League uh, for you very shortly. As the ball is just worked down towards the Leeds United left again. 2-1 they trail. Against the Watford side, who've scored more than once for only the second time in the last 12 games. Inside the centre circle, the ball is at the feet of Ethan Ampadu. Ampadu to Cooper. Cooper playing it forward. Byram runs onto it and Andrews follows him. And it's laid back towards Ampadu again in the midfield and then Roden will go out towards the right-hand side for Archie Gray. Ten minutes gone in the second half on TalkSport 2. Watford 2, Leeds United 1. Leeds bring the ball forward again. Ampadu under duress is uh, able to play a decent pass. Now out towards the right-hand side for Ruta. Let's take a little deflection. And the goalkeeper just had to make sure that was going to clear his bar because it was dipping. It does. It goes out of play for a Leeds United corner. Yeah, I think Ruta there, I think he done ever so well. You know, he did have options to, to release the ball. He's got the shot away. I think Batman was, was comfortable. You know, <clears throat> knew exactly where the goal was, where the crossbar was, just making sure that ball was... There was a lot of movement on it as well. Dipped just over the bar there, Jim. But, yeah, a little bit better from Leeds. Link-up play was good. Pam Banford, an option. Kept the ball in play, linking up well. But, yeah, just the, the, the tempo and intensity just needs to be improved a little bit. So, corner which will be taken on the Leeds right by Dan James. Roden and Cooper, the two centre-halves, starting outside the six-yard box, making their way in now. It's Cooper with a looping header, easily headed away, though, by Seralta. 
and brought down on the left-hand side of his own penalty area by Yasser Espria. Kamara's making life really difficult for him and he's won it back temporarily. The ball ultimately goes over the line and it will be a Watford ball. Tomorrow, three live Premier League games for you. Newcastle against West Ham, 12.30 on TalkSport, followed by Spurs against Luton, which kicks off at three. You won't see that anywhere on UK TV tomorrow. And Brentford against Manchester United is the last of the three, as Manchester United hope to try and close the gap on the top five of what might be a Champions League position. So Newcastle, West Ham, Spurs, Luton, and Brentford, Manchester United. All coming your way tomorrow on Talk Sport. And a reminder of the games Monday, Talk Sport 2, Leicester Norwich. Leicester on the back of only four points from six games against improving Norwich. Stoke against Huddersfield, a relegation corker. Chris alongside Ian Danter for that one in the Potteries on TalkSport 2 Monday afternoon followed by a tea time game over on TalkSport Ipswich against Southampton the current leaders against the side in fourth and Leeds against Hull with Lucy Ward alongside me at Ellen Road a Yorkshire derby Leeds Hull 8 o'clock on Monday night then looking further ahead more live Premier League action coming your way Tuesday Wednesday Thursday we've got all of the games for you uh, you might need the TalkSport app depending on who you support which game you want to listen to uh, download the TalkSport app and I guarantee that your game will be there if it's not on TalkSport 2 or on TalkSport and that's uh, a little bit further ahead Tuesday Wednesday Thursday next week uh, the applause you can hear for Emmanuel Dennis who's coming off and he's going to be replaced here by Ismail Kone, the Canadian international, Ivorian-born uh, forward or attacking midfielder. Uh, hoping for his first goal since New Year's Day. Uh, Kone for Dennis, the change being made just before the hour mark. Dennis was excellent, Chris. Yeah, he was. You know, I think uh, just linked up well. You know, I think asking a question in behind movement was great. Really kind of brought... Uh, the, the Watford players in take, hold, help the ball up and allow Watford to get up the pitch as well so yeah he, and like you say he's going to get judged on goals and what a goal it was his fourth of the season and that includes a, a loan spell that he had at the beginning of the campaign out in Turkey where he failed to find the net uh, but his return to Vicarage Road has done him wonders now Sakone playing through the middle uh, just not quite as a false nine he's been playing as the leader of the line, but he's got uh, a Spria to his right-hand side and uh, Bayo to his left now. It's Cooper. Gets it forward here for Byram. Into the feet of Glenn Kamara. We've played nearly an hour. Not too many signs of a Leeds equaliser at the beginning of this second half. They trail by two goals to one. The three goals we saw coming in a 13-minute spell towards the end of the first half. Ball out of play for a throw. As things stand right now, Ipswich top of the table two points clear of Leeds and Leicester if Leeds were to concede again they would fall out of the top two they would have scored two more from here they'll be top of the end of the night so close Cooper on the left hand side for Leeds in all white played down towards Byram Byram controlling it in his orange boots and going back to Cooper again Cooper finding his goalkeeper uh, Melier controlling it uh, bringing it towards the edge of the box and then side footing it calmly out towards the right hand side for Archie Gray 3-0 leads won back in September when the two sides met 3-0 they won here on the last trip to Vicarage Road with goals from Rafinha, Rodrigo and Harrison how quickly the uh, side has uh, developed uh, the referee has, uh, has he given a free kick there it was, or is he given a throw he's given a throw it was a uh, uh, an exuberant challenge let's say <laughs> but a throw is given the referee said it was a, a perfectly legitimate one as uh, Lewis was there Gray was there and Gray uh, trying to get in there to win the ball back but it uh, is a throw which will be taken over on the Watford left hand side it's a fantastic contest isn't it Archie Gray and Jamal Lewis you know getting at each other there I, d I do think it was a free kick the way that Archie Gray came in uh, but like you say Jamal Lewis never made uh, too much uh, about it although it was minimal contact Leeds able to try and break here. Bamford back for Kamara. Ball out towards Dan James on the uh, Leeds United right. Who's got time to let it run towards him. As Serralta is with him. James takes the touch. Hits a long oh, diagonal good. ball. And then Somerville will chase after it. Uh, collides with Andrews. And the referee has... What's he giving? Is he giving a corner to Leeds? He's saying that the touch came off Andrews. I think. 
Well, and Andrews is face down on the turf. Joe, I've got to say the referee's got it all wrong there. Andrews, it was an, some of it was a great ball from Dan James. Some of going to try and take it on the chest. Andrew gets a little flick with the head, and then some of will takes him out. It's a free kick to Watford. I don't understand what the referee's doing. I don't think he, he, he believes that Andrews got any contact. But why is he giving a corner then? Because some of us definitely had the contact uh, with Andrews there. I think he's got it wrong. Well, he's given a corner to Leeds, which is their third of the second half. They only won one in the first 45 minutes. Well, the possession in the second half, much more in Leeds' favour than it was in the first. But can they do something constructive with it? Not from this juncture. Backman with a good double-fisted punch high up in the air, which is cleared. And then there's a coming together between James and Bio, And Watford will be able to bring it forward. Here's Kayembe. Kayembe, first time ball across the face of the penalty area, looking for a spreer, and it's half clear. But Andrews will come onto it. Andrews is 10 yards outside the penalty area. He goes back for a spreer. Watford forced to go all the way back for Seralta at the heart of the centre halves but then Paul just chips it down towards the left took a spiteful bounce but it's well kept in over there and Watford bring it forward a little reverse ball around the corner from Kone and Lewis can win another corner yeah it's excellent it's, I've got to say it's excellent I thought I thought uh, Ryan Andrews I thought when he's got Archie Gray on this right hand side go at him get yourself down the line get some uh, across and get in pulled up but use the ball well uh, recycled it Cody's got the ball on the other side and I've got to say the weight of pass to, to Jamal Lewis was, was excellent again but defended well by Roden there's only been one shot on target in this second half so far it came from Leeds but for all the possession they've had they'll be uh, disappointed that they haven't been able to for something a little bit more than that in comes this Watford corner it's a deep away swinger Serralta going up for it and he just fell for Kayembe who's trying to volley one towards goal from eight yards out and it went up rather than towards goal and that was a glorious chance he wouldn't have expected to, the ball to fall his way there but he had time to bring it down and take a touch but he went for the first time volley got it all wrong yeah I think I think that going for it first time Jim I think was the right decision he's watching it all the way he knows exactly where the goal is I think he's got to come round over the ball hit it into the ground uh, and, and ask uh, Melia a question that way but he had so much time it's a massive massive opportunity isn't it uh, so time for a reshuffle for Leeds United they've brought Thierpo on uh, he's replaced Cooper so Ampadu's going to go to centre half Byram goes from left back to right back and Archie Gray moves into midfield alongside Kamara. So it's now Melier in goal. Uh, a back four of Byram, Roden, Ampadu and Fierpo. And then Kamara alongside Gray in midfield. The, uh, the top four still the same. 2-1 leads trail. Ipswich top of the table at the moment. And a couple of points clear. What a day for Ipswich as it stands. And now as the ball is played for, Bio's offside for Watford. In a good position, but it just nicked a yard. Free kick to Leeds. What do you make of that change, Chris? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it just shows you the, the, the quality they've got. I think Furpo, you know, that he's going to bring that attacking threat down this left hand side. I understand that he's got with, with Somerville, Sam Byron for me. <laughs> you can put him anywhere on the pitch. Just a consistent, steady football. And actually, Gray, where I want to see him more, you know, in that holding midfield road, he's a fantastic technical player. Uh, real good quality as well. So, yeah, it's, I understand why Farker. I don't think Cooper has, has quite been at the races. You know, I think. You know, been a bit second best too many times this evening, and you can't. You know, the seven, eight games to go. You cannot, you cannot uh, be found wanting. That's a junior Firpo on. Um, they were always likely to try and get him some minutes tonight. Made his international debut for the Dominican Republic uh, this week, and his uh, second cap came in a game on Wednesday, which didn't kick off till one in the morning. Uh, Wednesday, so that's what still less than 72 hours ago, and he's had a transatlantic flight meantime. Uh, but he's on for the last 25 minutes, and he's in possession now. Few uh, leads hearts in mouths just for a moment as the ball was played for Melier, very calm and collected under pressure, just came outside his penalty area and swept up. Firpo into the feet of Somerville. Uh, Andrews pushes forward to engage. Uh, Firpo able to easily play the ball back to the uh, heart of his defence for Joe Roden. Roden rolling it forward with the studs of his right boot towards the edge of the centre circle. Now played forward by Archie Gray. Gray to Somerville. Somerville on the left-hand side. Goes back for Gray. Gray under pressure to Ampadu. 
Ampadu square to his right hand side for Roden and Gray again be interesting to see where Archie Gray actually ends up in his career when he's 20 years time when he's probably played about 800 games uh, just what position he will have played the majority in here's James James on the edge of the area low skidding left footed effort and Bamford slid in and must have been really close to being able to divert that with his toes past the goalkeeper who's committed to the save yeah it's always going to be a a threat there isn't it you know Dan James done really really well you know comes in just when gets the ball on to his left goes through a lot of bodies <laughs> You know what, I think he's going to be offside there, Bamford, uh, anyway, if he does get any sort of contact. But like you say, it does uh, put Backman off. Long ball launched forward by Backman, and headed away by Ampadu. And then on by Gray, and then Ruta. Uh, Bamford will chase that, and Porteous can mop up. And the goalkeeper is uh, able to pick it up. I think there was just a hesitation for a moment as to uh, whether he was allowed to pick that up whether it had been a touch on the defender or it was a back pass Roden to Ampadu Firpo Backman's ball forward coming straight back again Leeds possession this second half has been up in the mid 60s Somerville's got it and he's been uh, forced back inside his own half by Pollock uh, just a little word between the pair of them as well uh, Somerville who's uh, and there aren't too many professional footballers who are shorter than me. He's one of them. <laughs> uh, Pollock certainly isn't. So it's a, a real mismatch uh, between the pair of them. And uh, Pollock comes out towards the touchline with Somerville. And the ball is over on the uh, far touchline now. The lead's right. And James taking on Porteous wins a throw. We're midway through the second half. It's a race by so far. What for two? Leeds United one. And uh, it's going to be a... A spectacular turnaround, not their first of the season by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, a very impressive one nevertheless. If Leeds can uh, turn a 2-1 deficit into a victory here, which is what they need to go back to the top of the table. Start of the day, Tom. Uh, the day which started really well for them with Leicester's defeat away to Bristol City. Uh, but Ipswich's win, taking uh, Leeds down to second. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, a further concession here. We'll see them fall to third behind Leicester on goals scored. Kamara plays it back here for Ampadu Ampadu to his right hand side for Joe Roden we've got just over 20 minutes to go yeah the concern for me Jim I think the closer we get to the, that final whistle does this Watford side get a little bit deeper you know that the mental side of it you know protecting that lead allowing leads to get into advanced areas uh, so it's just important I think that that information and the leaders on the pitch every opportunity that, that, that leads past the ball sideways can Watford step up close those gaps a little bit but that defensive line just gets a little bit further away from Backman as, as, as possible you're listening to Watford against Leeds in the EFL Championship on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply and Leeds bring it forward into Watford territory they're attacking the rookery end away to our left and the ball goes out of play for a throw which will be taken by uh, Watford who've shown many facets to their game in the first half taking the game to Leeds United on the front foot in the second half they've been more withdrawn they've been happy to try and soak up the pressure and play more the way that we anticipated and they've done that very effectively as well so far yeah I think it's, it just shows you the the quality that the side has you know how to manage a game you know when you're in front you don't have to go hell for leather you don't have to score again you just have to make sure you don't concede uh, and nullify the threat and I think they've done it done it really well but they've had their moments Jim you know they're sitting back they're allowing Leeds to have it that defensive unit to pass the ball between them as soon as they advance over a certain area that's when there's, it's not just ones and twos they actually go as a group and then the defensive line step up as well last home league win for Watford it came against Norwich back in November on a day when they were 2-0 down and came back to win have taken three points out of a possible 27 at Vicarage Road since then and conceded twice as many as they've scored. And we welcome listeners from TalkSport back to Vicarage Road where we're in the final 20 minutes of the game. Watford very progressive and proactive in the first half. Got themselves a 2-1 lead with goals from Bio and Dennis. Somerville had equalised for Leeds in between them. The second half leads with much more of the possession but not a real stack of chances and Watford have just been able to soak it up Chris Uelamo the former Scotland international striker alongside me on commentary duty over on TalkSport 2 
And Leeds have got work to do here, Chris. Yeah, they have. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll be surprised if yeah, Perot's coming on now as well, Jim. I think Jaden Anthony should be making an appearance as well. They've got attacking threat, but like you're saying, Watford are completely in control. They're nullifying it. They've, they've managed the game a little bit differently this second half. They've now dropped a little bit deeper, allowing Leeds to have it. But as soon as Leeds advance into that middle third, that's when Watford come alive. And like you say, they've been compact, they've been organised, hard to break down. And in that transition, I think they've used the ball really, really well. Roden. Played out towards the right-hand side for Archie Gray, who's uh, playing that little bit deeper now. Uh, Roden's in there strongly. Here's Junior Firpo, who's come on as a substitute for Leeds. Uh, Somerville with a little reverse ball forward, but that's deflected to safety off a Watford defender. We've got 18 minutes to go. As things stand right now, Ipswich top of the championship, Leeds the second, Leicester our third. Will it still be that way in 20 minutes? You want to find out, it's over on TalkSport 2 with Chris and myself. 72 on the clock, Watford 2. Leeds United won. And Leeds will be making the change in the next break in play. And Joel Peru is going to be coming on. Uh, the Dutchman, signed from Swansea, scored against Watford back in September. One of 13 goals that he scored this season. Here's Somerville, Leeds' leading scorer. And he'll play back for Ethan Ampadu. And Ampadu will go across to the right-hand side. But what Leeds need to do is find a way to be able to turn this possession into more constructive goal-scoring opportunity because there have been very few of them so far. I just wonder whether it might be Ruta who is coming off. And we talked in the first half that at times he looked a little bit laboured and that's completely understandable, bearing in mind that he had uh, a hernia up uh, less than a fortnight ago. Uh, but maybe, just maybe, it might be catching up with him and Peru for Ruta looks the likely change. Ampadu will uh, play the ball across the face of his own penalty area. Now towards the Leeds United right, Roden bringing possession forward, Bamford very quickly spinning and uh, Serrata going with him, but he needed the ball to be played first time and it wasn't, Glenn Kamara's got it, Kayembe and Kamara to an extent have cancelled each other out, Kayembe's more than cancelled Kamara out on this occasion, he's done brilliantly to step away from him with possession, Espria plays back the way that he's facing to his goalkeeper, Backman works it long over halfway. And the offside flag is up against Kone. 73 gone. What for two Leeds United won and the changes made Peru for Ruta. Yeah, it's understandable. You know, I think uh, Peru come in, play that number 10 role. You called it there, Jim, you know, about Bamford spinning away. He's not done it enough for me tonight. You know, he's always coming to feet. You know, sometimes you've got two players doing the same thing and Ruta and Peru coming on will do the exact same so Bamford has to be looking in behind yeah share the, share the role every now and again but you've got to stretch the pitch make sure there's space for the likes of uh, Firpo and uh, Archie Gray and uh, Byram to, to fire the ball into those little areas now Somerville's been fouled by Andrews and it's a free kick on halfway for Leeds Ampadu to Roden and out towards the right hand side for Byram and Leeds' possession is uh, beginning to edge further forward on a consistent basis now. Bamford. That was a poor touch by Peru, struggling to get to the uh, pace of the game with his first contribution and just uh, rolled away from him. Oh. Deli Bashiru with very quick, magical feet. He's waved up to his feet by Byram after going down. Deli Bashiru was convinced he was caught. The referee didn't think he was and play restarts with a Leeds throw instead of a Watford free kick. Well, we've not seen it on the monitor, but I'd always say look at the, the body language of the player. Yeah, you know what, it's a soft one. He's, there's a little clip of the, the heel, but uh, yeah, I think the referee's got that one spot on, Jim. Might as well place David Webb. Watford leading 2-1. Uh, we thought they probably should have had a penalty in the first half when it was 0-0. That uh, might be academic. Although, having said that, with goal difference so tight, uh, as it is towards the uh, top of the table... Uh, had Watford had that penalty and scored it, then uh, that would be the difference between uh, who's in the automatic promotion spots at the end of the night and who isn't, if it stays this way. But there's still a long way to go into the final 15 minutes. Leeds very quick out of the traps in games by and large and they've got a very good record scoring late goals as well here's Somerville looking for another one now pops it off to his right hand side for James who couldn't work it past Lewis defending well and coming into a central position there Jamal Lewis just off of the left hand side an extra body in the thick of the action and he got his angles absolutely spot on 
Ball play four towards Bayer, but he can't hold it up. And Leeds will bring it forward again. Clever ball the outside of the boot from Gray. Somerville with a delicious turn. He's brilliant. And he'll continue his run forward. Bamford can't poke it back to him. Peru will try and take over. And Kayembe flashes it clear. Leeds is like on, on, really on top there. I think uh, Somerville, great close control. Trying to link it up with Bamford. I want him to be selfish there. He's central. He's running into the, the D at the edge of the 18-yard box. I think he's got to take the shot shot away himself there it's a former Scotland international striker Chris Uelamo a former Watford player as well and his old club leading 2-1 with 14 minutes to go the signs beginning to increase that it could be a long last 14 minutes if you're a Watford fan indeed if you're an Ipswich or a Leicester fan as well listening with everything crossed that this goes against Leeds Here's Firpo making his way forward. Somerville towards the edge of the penalty area. Oh, just trying to thread the ball through. Uh, Backman ends up with the ball at his feet. And they still haven't really worked him on a consistent basis in this second half at the risk of labouring the point, but they are getting themselves into better positions. The bottom line is we play 32 minutes of this second period. They've had two shots on target leads, which consider the number of goals they score. I know they've got a sensational defensive record and there are sides that have scored more than them, but the, generally speaking, they're still up in the 70s in terms of goals. They're averaging nearly two a game. And it's a surprise that they haven't been able to work Daniel Bankman more regularly. I think it's down to the, the defensive unit in, in front of Daniel Bankman. I think they've they've, they've been uh, very, very disciplined. I think they've, they've, they've controlled the game. They've stepped up every opportunity. You know, and yeah, I think it's a natural thing to be a little bit more defensive in the second half, especially when you're defending that lead. But I think they've used the ball well, Jim. They've went and won the, uh, got the blocks in, took the sting out of it for Backman for those shots that, they, that we have spoken about. But yeah, Watford, I think uh, Tom Cleverley will be delighted. You know, I know there's still, what, 15, 20 minutes to play. We, we added time at the end, but he'll be delighted with what he's seen so far. But it's about maintaining that, playing like that and getting the result off the back of it. 13 minutes to go uh, you're not missing any action Jamal Lewis was just down receiving treatment inside his own penalty area he's okay but he's uh, he's going to have to wait uh, the obligatory 30 seconds before he's allowed back onto the field and the ball is in the hands of Backman and Backman clears a high right footed clearance just hurt your eyes looking into the floodlights as uh, that one eventually comes down as you trace the flight of the ball Firpo playing it forward Bamford, oh great control, lovely little weighted wall pass back for Firpo, four towards Peru, and if he could have got that into his stride, he was clean through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, but he couldn't, and Backman gets it. Well, it's an excellent play, wasn't it? You called it with, with Bamford's great close control, bringing Firpo in, and I think he's just, I would rather him find the feet of, of Peru there, like, rather than in front of him, he doesn't need to, there, there wasn't a lot of room for error, so it has to be a, a perfect pass. But uh, it, was, uh, it just shows you the, the, the threat of, of Leeds United. Uh, there's going to be more action on the Watford bench in a moment, I think. Uh, the ball is cleared by Pollock. Over the top for uh, Bio to chase. Uh, Melier, a little bit frustrated that didn't come inside his penalty area, but uh, still had the, the wherewithal to be able to turn and shepherd the ball out of play for a goal kick in front of a photographer who almost got much more of a close-up than he anticipated there. Uh, but uh, both players managed to avoid him. Uh, so the change is going to be made and it's Ince for a Spreer. So it's a slightly defensive-minded change, a midfielder for a midfielder for Watford. And Tom Ince coming on. He's uh, seen a lot of action off the bench this season. A man that's played nearly 400 championship games in his career. And he will replace a Spreer for the final 10 minutes plus stoppage time. Yeah, understandable. You know, a player who is, who is a, a technical player, you know, he can get on the ball, he can challenge, he's mobile. Yeah, so it's, for me, it's a, yeah, a no-brainer. I think a Spreer has come on, a bit of a live wire. I think he's, he's had his moments. Yeah, but I think they've ticked the box across the, as a collective, I think as a team performance, it's been outstanding. So can Tom Inns come on and, and make a positive, positive impact for the team? Has scored against Leeds in the past for both Blackpool and Derby, but uh, not for a while. And here's Somerville. And Somerville to Kamara. Kamara very deliberately uh, places in a, a thud as the ball is uh, played by his uh, right instep four down towards uh, Junior Firpo. Leads then recycle it through the defensive cordon. Uh, Roden to Byram, who's playing at right back now, down towards Ampadu, who has played much of the game in midfield, but is now at centre half. 
he plays it forward over the halfway line and Somerville in looking to supply him with a return ball has given it away straight to Ince who wins the throw off Somerville in this second half possession now 80-20 in Leeds favour but all they've got to show for that is five attempts and only two of those on target Watford still hanging in there for what will be their first home win in the league since late November if and it's still a big if with Leeds they can hang on for the ten minutes or so that remain Ampadu getting the better of Bayer goes back for his goalkeeper and Melier will play out from the back well this is it you're seeing 80-20 in, uh, in Leeds' favour but it's all in front of Watford you know I think uh, if, if they're creating chance after chance and it's defending for their lives and blocks yet yeah, then understand it's a little bit frantic but I think Watford look in, in control you know but Leeds do have that those individuals with one little moment of quality they can definitely punish Watford so concentration levels have to be switched on uh, until that final whistle uh, Gray almost able to play Bamford in there Bamford making that same run spinning around the back of Sir Alta but uh, Gray uh, couldn't play the ball the right side of Pollock now uh, Leeds in a much deeper position now get a free kick on halfway and it is very definitely a back five now <laughs> I mean it hasn't been for much of the game with uh, Lewis and Andrews pushing forward but now it is we hold what we've got from a, a Watford perspective is it going to be two wins out of two for Tom Cleverley as interim head coach or will Leeds be able to extend their unbeaten streak to 14 an unbeaten streak which goes back to December uh, to their last league defeat against West Bromwich Albion all six of their league defeats this season have come on the road Kamara goes back towards halfway for Roden they'll be uh, trying to get yet another home win at home to Hull 8 o'clock Monday night remember that's life for you over on Talk Sport Firpo flashes this cross in it's come off the thigh of Seralta and it's cleared by Pollock just before it goes over the line and out of play it uh, will be a throw on halfway for Ampadu uh, Leeds going to be uh, bringing a young Matteo Joseph on a player that scored twice at Chelsea in the FA Cup uh, an England under 20 international of Spanish descent and he'll be on in a moment to uh, sharpen up the forward line Kamara finding Gray seven to go pro probably five minutes of stoppage time I would guess 2-1 to Watford Ampadu out towards the Leeds United right for Sam Byron uh, Byron will turn inside he's uh, watched very carefully by Jamal Lewis it's a good ball round the back for Kamara to try and chase Seralta comes across he's had an excellent game and he will be able to clear towards halfway but straight back to Leeds in fact it goes out of play for a throw and here comes what is going to be a double change because they're going to be bringing Jaden Anthony on as well as Matteo Joseph so the first player coming off is Byram so Anthony for Byram and Joseph for Kamara so they're going to play with an extra forward they've got to throw stuff at this now and they're doing it with six to go yeah no surprise you know I think it's uh, <laughs> okay if they go and concede another fair enough but you know I think Daniel Farker's thrown all his attacking players and I've seen it many a time this season the way that they move the way that they rotate it's difficult and this is when Watford have to be really disciplined Somerville on the left hand side Joseph playing through the middle now with Bamford and Somerville inside the penalty area. Yeah, it's a clever little step over Joseph with his first touch. Can't score. He can with his second. He's only been on the field for 15 seconds. And Matteo Joseph scores. It is the first league goal of his career. And what a massive moment for him. One for two. Leads two. Talk about an introduction. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, I think it's about decisions made. Daniel Farker throwing everything at it, but going in. As a, as a Watford player, you've got to be concentrated, you've got to go mark for mark, you've got to take responsibility, who's who's marking who, you know, and I think uh, they are a little bit fortunate, I've got to say, Matteo Joseph, but you've got to be alive to it, you got, you got a second chance, he's put it in the back of the net, so now, now it's, what happens now, there's leaders in the lead side that say, right, okay, can we go and get a third, and that's, and that's, but Watford have to be switched on, he'll be... Tom Clive will be so disappointed the players uh, okay you're saying defensive is a five but then the, the midfield two have dropped into that that defensive unit as well be switched on and now it's all leads Joseph Gray and the push forward again Gray flicking it around the corner Bamford can't get there ahead of Lewis gets it back to his goalkeeper clearance from him straight to Jaden Anthony cushion header out of the right flank for Dan James 
James faced up by Kone. Leeds knocking at the door. The substitution reaping immediate dividends. And now plenty of time for them to win it. Four minutes plus four or five to be added. Somerville on the Leeds United left. Good turn from him. Trying to get the better of Andrews. And take it down towards the byline. Oh, he's passed him with a, an injection of pace. The shot comes in. It's Anthony. Brilliantly cleared by Backman. Well, the first save was impressive. The second essential. He beat the first one straight out to Jaden Anthony. Eight yards out. And he's pinged it right-footed. And Backman's got his body behind it to save it. It's all leads at 2-2. Two -two. Well, two fantastic saves, isn't it? Some of them done ever so well. I've got to say, Ryan Andrews, Matty Pollock has to do better. They have to do better. Anyway, Backman, great save with, with his chest. But then the Jaden Anthony one, he just, he's up again, isn't he? Doesn't know a lot about it and throws it. I think he saves it with his feet there. But it's an excellent uh, save from, uh, from Backman. Three and a half to go. And for the first time... There's a feeling that a Leeds winning goal might be inevitable. Ball inside the penalty area. It's not going to come from this. It's headed down. Bamford will keep it alive. Hook back in. Caught and well caught by Backman. 2-2. Clearance from Backman. A hurried one towards halfway. He's looking to try and pick out Ince. It's well won by Roden. Four from him to Somerville. Turn back behind Gray for Ampadu. And Daniel Farker just stands very calmly with his arms out telling his players not to hurry there is still plenty of time don't need to be too hasty with this Anthony pulling it back over on the Leeds United right an opportunity to bring it forth for Dan James James for Fierpo to Somerville we're in the 88th minute Watford 2 leads 2 Matteo Joseph scoring not quite with his first touch but scoring with his second just moments after and uh, Watford win a throw as uh, Andrews inadvertently does the splits. Uh, Somerville caught him and uh, not in the, the least painful area. There's a free kick which will be taken by Watford. Uh, Backman will take it. And Leeds just... Well, Watford should I say with the chance to just gather a little bit of breath. 2-2 the scoreline. Long clearance four from Backman. And Bio and Ampadu just get involved in a wrestling match around the edge of the penalty area. Referee ignores it. Play continued. Joseph, oh, great touch, came to meet it and uh, chested it down in the path of Jaden Anthony. And it goes to the right hand side for James. James playing deeper now with Anthony outside him. Uh, the ball back for Roden to Ampadu. 90 seconds to go. And the Leeds fans away to our right are believing here, Chris. Well, I've seen the side do it time and time again, Jim, haven't they? You know, I think uh, completely in control now. Watford a little bit, kind of, you know, a little bit passive. I think they've got to be aggressive and get on the front foot and try and force these back. But at the minute, you know, it's a decision. A point is still a good point. They're not really looking, they're not really created much this second half. They made a decision to sit in and they were comfortable until it's, <laughs> until Farker threw everything at it and got a little bit fortunate with the, with the Joseph goal. Now Ince making his way forward and he's... Uh, <laughs> Battling his way through. There's an angry reaction there from Archie Gray. And it's going to be a free kick to Leeds. And Watford will make a change. And Bio is going to come off and he's going to be replaced by Milita Rajevic, the Danish striker, a sign from Kalmar in Sweden in a £1 million deal. He's come off the bench more often than he started. He's got 10 goals for Watford. There's still a, a rawness about his game at times. But Ryovic on. Big bulky striker for the uh, final moments. We'll be able to hold it up if uh, they can get it forward. But here's Joseph at the other end. Pollock goes down inside the penalty area. Coming across the cover. Uh, Watford can put it away and out for what would have been a corner. But the referee said it was a foul by Joseph on Pollock. And as a result, it's going to be a free kick to Watford on the edge of the six. And we'll be in stoppage time by the time it's taken. It's 2-2. It yeah, was an excellent little ball in behind. Great run from Matteo Joseph as well there. I've got to say, Pollock followed him all the way. I think got into a great position. Should never have been given the opportunity to get any control of the ball. I think Joseph had to take the shot on. Uh, he'd got into the right, the right side. The goal was there. You know, Batman, you could look him in the eyes. But he's, he's tried to cut in onto his right foot and allowed Pollock that opportunity just to intervene. As we go into five minutes of stop, time. Ipswich at top of the table with 84 points. Leeds have 83. Leicester 82 with the game in hand. 
Ball won back by Andrews. Rajevic, Kone. And then James will knock it away on the edge of the penalty area in the retreating. Bamford with a good touch. And then it's weighted down the line by Peru. And Joseph will chase. Seralta has done well. He's covered the ground quickly enough to get there first. And hooks it clear from down by his corner flag. He got it away, but only as far as Firpo. Layoff through the midfield. Peru telling Gray to play it first time out of the right. But instead he's gone back for Ampadu. Gray gets it again. Four minutes of stoppage time to go. Two apiece. Here on TalkSport 2. It's been a brilliant Good Friday of action in the EFL. And we've been lucky to leave the best till last. Ampadu down for Firpo. Firpo rolled four towards Bamford. And Bamford's fouled by Pollock. It's a free kick to Leeds. So he's been doing it all game, Pollock. You know, he's been giving it to some of our and Bamford, the referee's got it spot on. You know, I think it's it's just frustration as well. You just want to be a little bit more disciplined now. You're going to have to be switched on. You, <laughs> the attacking players in that defensive unit uh, for Leeds United, they have to take responsibility and mark themselves up. Far too many uh, of those uh, attacking players are getting far too much time and space. A great a fair power to Ampadu. Now towards the Leeds United right-hand side here for James. Jaden Anthony ahead of him. He'll uh, try and take on Ryan Porteous, who gets a touch and it goes out of play for a Leeds throw, which will be taken about four yards from the corner flag over on the far touchline, the Leeds United right. And we tick into the third of the five added minutes. Three minutes left for Leeds to win this. Three minutes left for Watford potentially on the counter-attack. Now, Anthony, as he was walking back inside the penalty area to deal or try and get on the end of a long throw, has fallen over Porteous, who's down on the deck. And then there's some angry pushing and shoving going on. About uh, nine or ten players, all in close attendance, and just a little bit of pushing and shoving going on. Nothing particularly heavy metal about it. Now, the referee is going to call uh, a couple of the uh, chief protagonists over. He's going to have a word with Backman. And he's uh, going to have a word with Porteous as he gets back to his feet. I don't know whether it was innocuous. So you're looking at a replay. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't really see too much. You know, I think he's, he said that he's, he's kicked him on, on the shin. Well, I'll tell you something now. I'm looking at Ryan Porteous and he's the same height as me. Not Maybe a couple stone lighter, but he's, he's not. He's, that, that doesn't warrant what I've just seen going to ground and rolling around and things like that. Come on, it's a bit... You know what I mean? I, I do. I've got so much time for him as well, the big man. But uh, yeah, I don't understand what he's trying to do there. Yeah, uh, there's a point that's been made many times in the past. But there's a collision like that on a dance floor in a nightclub. You don't go down. <laughs> Definitely not. Jim. It's uh, <laughs> going to be a throw, which will be taken over on the right-hand side by Leeds. 90 seconds to go. Long throw inside the penalty area is missed. A few. It's cleared out towards the edge of the penalty area for Somerville. Somerville now for Firpo. Firpo a couple of yards in from the left-hand touchline. Back for Cree Somerville again. Nice shape on a right-footed cross. Siralta heads it away. We're in the 94th minute. Probably two minutes left to play. Right-footed ball inside the penalty area. Too high for Bamford. Not deep enough for Joseph. Watford can clear and Rajevic finds Kayembe. He goes out of the Watford left and a chance to bring it forward. Good ball from Lewis down the line for Ince. Will it be Watford who supply the dramatic conclusion to this game? Ince is ball back inside. And Lewis stumbled and Leeds won it back. And James brings it forward towards halfway. Koning trying to challenge him. James can step away from that challenge. He can't beat Porteous, who then comes to meet the ball. And he was caught in getting it away. And it's a free kick to Watford. And we've probably got about a minute, 75 seconds to go. It's 2-2. Yeah. yeah, I think Porteous said it was a, Dan James was uh, under a lot of, lot of pressure there. You know, he did go in late on, on Porteous. I think the big man's just milking it a little bit, allowing the clock to tick down. But you know what? It's part and parcel of the game, Jim, isn't it? You know, I think uh, I think it's been an outstanding uh, performance from both. So play will restart with a goal kick, a uh, free kick. I beg your pardon from Daniel Backman. And the five minutes of stoppage time are up. Just a few extra seconds to be added on. Roden heads it away from the edge of his box. Then Somerville. It's going to be very late and very dramatic if Leeds win it now. Bamford turning it forward through the midfield. Kayembe poking it over the top. Gray letting it run. Roden behind him will clear for James. He's still inside his own half. But he pokes it down the line for Anthony. And Porteous cleans him out. 
And it's a free kick to Leeds. He just wasn't going to let Anthony get away with that. And Leeds making the point the advantage would have worked really well because the ball ended up with Bamford inside the Watford penalty area. But the referee immediately came across and has given a free kick as the very over-exuberant shoulder charge from Ryan Porteous has been punished. So it's all on this. Free kick to Leeds. Melier has stayed back. Gray stays hands on hips by the centre circle. Pretty much everybody else is forward. Watford defend with a high line on the edge of the D. Leeds needing an accurate delivery. Right footed in towards the near post. Peru looking for a flick on. Watford get it half clear. Somerville, that was a handball, was it? Play goes on. Firpo playing it forward. Watford clear. And it's out of play for a Leeds throw. And we played nearly six and a half minutes now. And this surely is the last attacking phase of the game. Ethan Ampadu to take a long throw. They've committed everybody bar Gray forward for it. 2-2 the scoreline. Launched in by Ampadu. Headed down. Watford will be able to clear. And that's that. And what a day it has been for Ipswich Town. Everybody else in the top four has lost ground. Leeds blowing the chance to go top. But salvaging a point late in the game. A thriller here at Vicarage Road in Tom Cleverley's first home game in charge. Watford twice leading and belying their league position with an outstanding performance. Leeds coming good the later the game went on. Equalising through Matteo Joseph five minutes from time. Not able to find the winning goal. And it's Ipswich who lead by a point with seven games to go. And Leicester with a game in hand. A further point behind. A brilliant, brilliant Good Friday. Easter Monday. Appetising as well. Watford 2, Leeds United 2. You said it, Jim. What a game here at Vicarage Road. It's relief for Leeds United, but they do miss a chance to sit top of the pile. Matteo Joseph to the rescue for them. The super sub scoring with his first touch. Handshakes between the players and Vicarage Road on its feet as well. What a performance from Tom Cleverley's side. They can be so proud of their performance today. He can be pr proud of his Watford side. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with their opponents and it took that late goal from Joseph for Watford to salvage the point here. Leeds with a team. They managed to get the point late on there. Applauding their away fans at the moment. They haven't lost today, Chris Abelamo, but they've Missed the chance to go top of the table. How disappointed will they be that they didn't take that chance to go top tonight? Yeah, I think, I think of course, they'll be disappointed and frustrated as well. But I think, uh, I don't even think a draw is probably a fair result. I think Watford controlled the game. I thought Watford used the ball better. I think Watford were the more disciplined in control. And I understand why they, in the second half they probably sat a little bit deeper, defended a little bit more, but still looked comfortable in my opinion. It was only when Daniel Farker made the chains, Anthony Joseph come on, taking off Byron, taking off uh, Cooper. But that, that kind of chaos created a little bit of confusion and they got very fortunate that the loose ball dropped to Joseph on two occasions. He put it in the back of the net. This is football. You know, Tom Cleverley, it's an excellent point. If you said to him before the game, uh, you're going to draw tonight, he'd, uh, he'd, he'd had a little dance for you around the, the dressing room. Daniel Farker, he can understand. But I know already what Daniel's going to say. It's another point. You know, there's, there's still a lot of football to be played. We're still very much in the position that's in our hands. And, that, and that's what, it's the business end, that's what you've got to be like, Ollie. You know, you, you'll, you'll be frustrated with, with the team because they haven't performed the way that they can do. Jim called it in his commentary, you know, they, they average two goals a game. They've done it here today, but it, well, look at the chances, you know, it was, it was very limited, wasn't it? So that, 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 that needs to improve, they've got a chance to put it right Monday. And sometimes that just could, could just be the little kind of call to realisation that you need to step up again for that, that run-in. It is only a point for Leeds, like you say there, Chris, but it's a point that could be so precious, given how tight it is right at the top of that table. We've just got to give some credit to Watford, though. What a spirited di display it was from them today. They won the 50-50s, they got in the face of Leeds, they were so positive, and they made it very, very difficult tonight. Well, I think you've got to give credit to Tom Cleverley, haven't you? You know, I think Jim said in his commentary about he's speaking to Watford fans and it's the best half of football they'd seen that first half since uh, the three the three goals in, uh, against Liverpool in the Premier League. 
that says a lot. That says that he, he's got he's got something about him as a coach. The players are showing that passion, that desire that they want to go out and play for him. You know, and this is what I'm trying to say. It's a massive opportunity for Tom Cleverley to, to go and showcase his own coaching coaching skills as well. But to get a result against a high flying, ruthless seat uh, Leeds United side who, to be fair, is that isn't having a too shabby 2024 20, that says it all for me but they have to build on that they can't go and get the, the get the, the beach head on they have to go and be competitive and see where they end up and then you never know <laughs> he might put himself in a position that they say take us on next season you've shown enough coaching qualities and the players have bought into what you're about that identity is very much evident tonight isn't it so yeah why not what a day for Ipswich Town though oh. as Jim said at the end of the game and as we tick into these final seven or so games Leicester still have the game in hand as well over Leeds and Ipswich but Ipswich sit top on 84 points Leeds just behind on 83 and then Leicester who lost today on 82 it's the impossible question Chris but I've got to ask you at this point right now which two teams are going up automatically it's, it's, it's such a hard question Ollie. <laughs> right, you look at Ipswich I think they had a the little blip January time probably the right time and then they've, they've brought in Kiefer Moore a fantastic signing best signing of the January window and they're kicking on now you're looking at Leicester they have to get back to winning ways now if they, if they, if they lose again Monday then you know it's in, it's in Leeds hands they never lost tonight they go again well, they, I don't think they've been beaten in the league in, uh, in 2024 have they they had no. a draw against Huddersfield a draw here this evening so back to winning ways this is this is football small margins you have to be at that level every single game you have to take you have to go with disappointment you have to kind of you have to get back on the bike and go again Leicester have to find a win from somewhere and put a little bit of pressure on Ipswich and Leeds United yeah it has been an intriguing crazy at times unthinkable championship title race it's had so many twists and turns today you've heard all of them live on Talk Sport 2 throughout the afternoon as well. Chris Uelamo, thank you very much indeed for your company. Our thanks to Jim Proudfoot for taking us through the game as well. And of course, thanks for your company this evening too. Before we go, don't forget that the live football just keeps on coming over the Easter weekend. Tomorrow, the Premier League returns. All the build-up begins at 11. Live on Talk Sport, Reshman Chowdhury and the team will be at St James's Park ahead of Newcastle against West Ham. Tottenham against Luton and Brentford Man United follow that game. A bumper day of Premier League action on TalkSport. Don't miss that. Then on Sunday, it's the Conti Cup final. Arsenal women taking on Chelsea women. That's at three o'clock. Live right here on TalkSport 2. And then in terms of the championship, we're doing this all again on Easter Monday. So don't miss it. 12.30, Leicester against Norwich in the championship. That's live and exclusive here on TalkSport 2. At one o'clock on TalkSport, it's game day live with Adrian Durham. He'll take you round the grounds with all the goals as they go in. At three o'clock on TalkSport 2, it's Stoke against Huddersfield in the championship. Ipswich then hosts Southampton at 5.30 and then at 8 o'clock Leeds against Hull at Ellen Road. That is live and exclusive on Talk Sport. What a brilliant night it's been here at Vicarage Road. What a fantastic day of football it's been as well across the Talk Sport network and here on Talk Sport 2. I've been Ollie Clink. Thanks for your company this evening. Next up on Talk Sport 2, the live sport continues with the PGA Tour. It's the Texas Children's Houston Open at Memorial Park. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the EFL. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Fancy some extra fries for extra time? Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus, rewards account required. Participating restaurants, subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Just checking in, Money Super 7. Are you on the case? All under control. Where on earth are you? Sorry, boss. Just testing the new rewards. We're giving customers a year of three days out worth £160 when they save on their car insurance, broadband and more. Like the zoo. Well, keep up the research. The Super Save Club from Money Supermarket. Seriously rewarding. Qualifying purchase with an account. Three days out via app. Value based on one visit monthly. Average ticket £13 October 23. 17 plus UK only. See site for terms. At B&Q and Trade Point, get three for two on interior paint and paint mixing. And four for three on laminate and luxury vinyl click flooring. That's a big spring refresh for less. Shop in-store or online. You can do it when you're being q it. Exclusions apply. Ends 8th of April. CDLY.com. Come on, the blues! We're in white, Einstein. Whoops! Sandy League foot is so British. 
Which reminds me, smart meters could help Britain create a future where we're less reliant on imported gas. All right. They help us manage our energy use, which improves the balance of supply and demand. So we could use more wind and solar energy from Britain. Help Britain create a future that's less reliant on imported gas. Search Get a Smart Meter today. Eligibility may vary. Consumer action required. Imagine, it's Saturday. One minute you're lying on the sofa, horizontal, in your pyjamas, trying to guess which celeb is dressed up as a singing chick.